Well, they've roped me into doing this show here. We've got stuff to talk about today on the Friday edition of NSF Live. We're going to be talking about black hole pictures. I'm going to scroll down. We've got Starship Static Fired Twice out there at Boca. Five years of NSF on YouTube. The last Delta Four Heavy is going to Delta Four Heavy. And I think that this show is starting five minutes late. Welcome to NSF Live. Roll the music. And here we go. Chamber pressure looks good. So, oh, it's just going to come back to me, apparently, and we're going to do a show here. Um, I already did the intro. What am I supposed to say now? Do I introduce who's on the show? I forgot how to do this sort of stuff. Folks, it's NSF Live. Y'all know we changed it up a little bit. We've been doing it a little bit later on Fridays instead of on Sundays. We still do things on other special occasions. Uh, but if we can get EJ to stop reading his encyclopedia of aviation oh. and Jack to wave at the camera, we're going to be doing a show here. How y'all doing today? Oh, I'm I'm just great. Yeah, this is this is great. Thanks for thanks for stopping by. It's, it's great. I just got to take my reading glasses off. How are you? Don't let us don't let us bother you, EJ. You looked like you were busy. I was reading about Hueys. Reading about Hueys. Yeah. How is that relevant to black holes? Uh, both of those spin. Hey, as long as it wasn't Comanches. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, starting off with a bang here. Okay. I'll allow it. Um, if y'all have seen this show before, you know EJ over here, longtime buddy from Twitch. You might be watching on his Twitch channel right now. EJ, thanks for joining us well, over thanks. here. Thanks for having me. Shady. I mean, thank you for joining us. Wait a minute. You, yeah, you know you're it's locked backwards. in here with me. Yeah, gracing us with your presence. How, <laughs> nice. how, how benevolent of you. Oh, geez. I f I'm going to come over there and splash water on you if you're not careful, Jack. Don't full screen me. Why would you full screen me? No one wants to see this. <laughs> Um, anyways, y'all know Jack too. Look, that was Jack over there too. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try to keep it a little bit more on the rails today to try Certain to get some interesting and insightful conversation. We did an episode on moon trains and we couldn't even keep it on the rails. The episode was about rails. Well, the moon train might not have rails, Doss. It might be more of a moon caravan. That is true. It might be a moon caravan. Um, where are like we gonna trains. start? You know what we should do. At some point, and I don't know if Kevin said to support this, every single time we roll the intro, there's like all the little edits and audio bits. At some point during this show, we should go through and talk about all the little audio bits that get thrown in. I don't think we're going to start with that, but uh, let's start with some science news, shall we? Anybody want to raise hands for science news? Uh, I'm finding the link to the audio bits, so somebody else talk. <laughs> like nobody raised their hand. EJ didn't even raise his hand. He just sat there like doing his things. Responded. Um, uh, what, I was going to, but you talked before me. Just talk over me. No one wants to hear me. No one wants to see me. Just, All right, fine. I will. Be just quiet. steamroll me. Rails. Rails. Bumpers. We're going to like put those bumpers in, you know, like at the bowling alleys, when they put those inflatable bumpers in. Yeah. So that I somehow can end up in the gutter. to get gutter balls even when those are up. So that's my life. <laughs> so this um, is, they, they got a they got a clear image of the black hole. Like, this is not really my... Oh area of expertise here das but the, i mean we the, the i noticed i saw the image before that they had from what is that like a year ago and it, it it's not as clear as that one yeah that, it's uh, it, it's what? two different things yeah like i really wonder if any of us are qualified to talk about the black hole here but let's give it our dangdish try um, because this big news there was like this whole teaser thing about oh they're gonna have a release new information about black holes and everybody's like ah oh, what's it gonna be this time right um, and so the new information that came out was this image 
that older one, the M87 one, that's a, that's a different black hole. And this new one, the Sagittarius A, Sagittarius A is the uh, black hole at the center of the Milky Way, isn't it? Like it's in Sagittarius if you look up at it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, gosh, we always get this, we always get this sort of deal because as is the norm with many different types of space imagery, this isn't an image or it's not a real image. It's not like you just take the raw data out and you turn it into visual light you've captured and somehow via the magic of filters, you, you it looks like this in real life. Uh, this is a, a generated image that they took from multiple ga data gatherings from all sorts of different telescopes, radio telescopes of, of this Sagittarius A black hole and they've made it. And so immediately out of the woodwork, everybody's like, oh, they're faking black hole science again. Oh, not them. <laughs> I mean, it's those people. To a certain extent, not, I can un I can understand like a little bit of grumbling when it comes to imagery like this. Like it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm all here yeah. for it. But like when you see, for example, pictures of nebula from like Hubble, from, like, Hubble or whatever, and it's, whatever. Like, it's like these colors don't correspond, correspond to actual, to actual colors. colors. They correspond they to, to, to different, different elements. elements. It's like elements. if you were there, like if you were there, wait, uh, wait, from a first person from perspective, a first -person it perspective. wouldn't look like that. So I I get it. But at the same time, this is a really awesome image just the same that helps us sort of visualize the, the black hole at the center of the Milky Way, which is insane. Well, not only that, but if I read that tweet correctly, well, while, while Das was talking, they, they, they imaged, well, imaged, quote unquote, they imaged two different black holes and figured out that the magnetic field propagates in the same way. That's actually pretty interesting that magnetic fields, you know, in, well, in a black hole are actually propagating in the exact same way. That's pretty cool. I mean, you need three for a pattern, but two two is not bad. You know what I mean? That's yeah. super. That's super interesting. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's like on the bleeding edge of humanity's knowledge, and every little grain of sand we can add to that mountain is. Uh, I, I appreciate it because. Yeah, like you said, two's not a pattern, but it's it's a line. It's no longer a point. It's a line. <laughs> Let's see if we can make a, a yep. slope or something. I don't know. I don't know, man. You need three Pokemans to battle, man, or do go. data analysis. I don't know, either one. Either way, you want to catch them all. That's going to be tough. There's a lot of black holes out there. Well, you got to catch them all, EJ. That's, I, the, that's the whole point. You're not wrong. You, I mean, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, You're I'm not, not wrong. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. <laughs> Rails, right? I, like, Das is muted right now. Rails. Uh... <laughs> oh, boy. Black hole's I, good. You know what? I did, dude, the, you know, what's going on, like, outside of, like, practical, well, not practical orbital mechanics, outside of, like, low, medium, and high Earth orbit and, and rocket design, like, and the rockets that fly around in those areas is super out of my wheelhouse i'm not gonna lie but also i didn't know until just now that black holes even had magnetic fields i i did not know that that's really cool i actually think that's super interesting yeah, that's kinda... something that has you know that much density that's actually going to warp space and time like that is going to have a magnetic field going with it you think it would just be like a vacuum cleaner just nope nope here i'm gonna eat that magnetic field too nope nope yeah, it's pretty crazy. And just to look mm. at this image and see those magnetic field lines it is just, we, I mean, we live in a crazy, beautiful universe. I don't really know what to say. I'm not a scientist. Dude, we should go there. I don't really, yeah, I would go. go there. I, I mean, hey, there. let's get spaghettified. Let's like, let's go through the singularity, baby. Let's do this. I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, that's that is wild, man. That's you've never, really cool stuff. You've never woken up in the morning and felt an inescapable desire to be compressed into an infinite oneness. I no. Is that is that just me? No, that's no. I, yep, nope. That's just you. <laughs> All right. Well, fair enough. Um, but yeah, as Das was saying, it's important to note that this is not a direct image. It's a visualization of data, um, but. Still super cool, just the same. Do we have can I talk now? Am I supposed to talk? Uh, you can if you want. Can, can y'all hear me? We can, can hear you. you. Apparently. The question is, do you hear everybody else when you're hearing me too or no? Like, chat, yeah. let us know how this is. <clears throat> it might just, this is probably on my end, Asfa. Your mic's coming in a little bit scratchy. 
but that just could that could be my audio preview. Yeah, I don't know for what it's worth. Chat it's much better five now. Five. All right, it's five by five good. now. Yeah, okay. Sound is good. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, we'll just go with it then. Yeah, that's fine. We got to start in the spaghetti. Yeah, we're um, good. all right. So now, now that we've got the technical hiccup fixed, um, I gotta say something about the whole. Oh, they edited the image, right? Because to to think that the only thing that's valid in reality is what your eyes can see. Like, there's so much that your eyes can't see. Your eyes don't get to see radio. Your eyes don't get to see all the other wavelengths. And the fact that we can visualize these things that your eyes can't naturally perceive is is another way of expending our scope of what how we observe the universe, right? So yeah. everybody that comes back in here, oh, it's, a, it's not a real image. That's an image made from something you can't see. It's like, no kidding. We can't see everything. Our eyes don't even work that way. We can play it back as a sound, too. That's just another way for us to fit this incomprehensible thing into our senses that sort of work with our physiology, right? Right, right. I mean, Das, what do you call it? The Mark I eyeball, I believe? Yeah, the Mark I eyeball. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, they haven't iterated on that too much, you know? It's kind of kind of old design. It's, it's tough to say that anything that you can't observe with your eyeball doesn't exist. Like, on the one hand, I understand, right? Like, oh, well, I can't see that. It doesn't exist. But there's a lot of stuff you can't see that doesn't exist, right? So, or does it? I'm pretty sure it does. I don't know. What did I say? From my frame of reference, it exists. Like it's fine from my frame of reference. <laughs> and to go outside my frame of reference, like I don't know what to tell you. Maybe it's a simulation. Maybe it's not. I'm just going to act like we're all good here. So, but yeah, just to to hit on what you were saying. Like I'm not saying it's a it's not cool to make a visualization of data. Uh, yep. I think it's super cool. Um, but it it is just important to clarify that that's what it is and it's not like a visual visible wavelength light image that you would see if you had i don't know a telescope and you were looking right. through it you know and from a spacecraft or something like that like i i just that's me personally because i grew up looking at the crazy images from hubble and whatnot and thinking like wow that looks so cool and it does and it's they're awesome Im it's awesome images and it, it allows us to visualize things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to but but then, yeah. you know, it's like learning Santa Claus isn't real. It's like, actually, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Uh, yeah. Santa yeah. Claus is real. What are you talking about? Physics is fake. Like, geez. Right. Um, I got I, I read of the same sort of thing like when I first started traveling to see rockets in person, right? I never saw a shuttle launch. Like big big problem, big regret of my life is I lived within driving distance and it was always, oh, it'll launch again next month. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make it, right? I never went, never saw a shuttle launch. Um, and when I first got into Twitch and we first started streaming things and I went down there to watch the launches, I went online and I like searched for a website and I was like, oh, what are these different places that I could go see a rocket launch look like, right? And uh, I saw all these amazing pictures and I went there. This was actually Playa Linda specifically. I don't remember which website it was. And I went to Playa Linda and when I got to Playa Linda, I'm like, that website was a lie. The rocket's like forever away. And what had happened was there was telephoto compression, right? Uh -huh. And it was this zoom lens where they had backed way off and then they zoomed in on the rocket from a distance and they had the crowd in the foreground. So with that compression, it looked like the crowd was really close to the rocket. And then I got there with my Mark 1 eyeballs, and I'm like, that rocket is tiny. It does look, look nothing like the picture. And then I had to learn about telephoto compression and that it doesn't actually look that way. So You think, you think someone would do that, just go on the internet and tell lies? <sighs> I mean, I even get, like, it, it makes a really cool shot, but I didn't understand the difference. And when I got there, I was expecting that to be what my eyes saw. And even in visible light there for a rocket launch, I was left to disappointed because it didn't look like the photographer's view that they had created with this telephoto lens and compression. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. Chad, no, no one would ever do that. Right. Flying on the internet. No, that never <laughs> happened. Anyway. Yeah. No. Yeah, Playa Linda is actually a good bit away, huh? I mean, it's it's a little ways away, but it, it's it's close to view a rocket launch from. It just didn't look like the picture that I had seen, mm -hmm. and it was because I didn't understand that the telephoto lens would compress it the way that it did. So, yeah, you yeah. know, I I don't know, but I I understand. Like, I want to experience more than I can just experience with my eyes and ears and stuff. And if there's some way to depict something to me that I can't just go out there and see, then that's cool. Like, let me hear colors or whatever you know once so. once again we're we're doing nsf synesthesia Anyways, and i'm here for jack it. back can you hear me jack? jack i'm not can you hear me are we hearing jack this time one two three i am not hearing jack check one check two check three this is compelling broadcasting 
There we go. I can hear He's myself. Back. All right. I don't, I don't think we're hearing Jack in Discord, but it's being sent through to YouTube. Oh, I'm muted so. in Discord. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'm you're an idiot. In Discord. <laughs> you're good. All right, we're cool. Um, chat, were there any questions? Like, are there any chat talking points about the whole black hole thing? I mean, not gravity waves. Magnetic field lines that are captured because somehow a radio telescope sees polarized light. I still don't even understand how that works. How do you see pol polarized light with a radio telescope? We need to get like a telescope expert on a show so we can talk through that. I'm but, sure uh, we can find one, dude. We know people. Anyways, James Atkinson is... says more data is more better, which of course I agree with. Uh, just convert the data so we can comprehend it. Yeah, I, agree. I like it. I agree. Just be clear that that's what you're doing. Yeah. So you're like truth in how you've manipulated the data. It doesn't mean that you're trying to create things that didn't exist. It just means that you're putting it into some context that we can observe or we can well, experience. Right. That's a, that actually, I mean, fellas, that actually reminds me of something. Actually, something very interesting. So, you know, if you cast your mind back to Apollo 8, you know, December 1968, you know, Jim Lovell sees the moon coming up over the horizon. All the pictures are like, if you go Google Earthrise or just image search Earthrise right now, you're going to see a picture of the moon on the lower part in the foreground and the earth coming up over it. But the ground is going to be perpendicular on the ground on the moon is going to be perpendicular to the bottom frame of the screen. Right. But that's not actually what happened. Apollo 8 did a, did a it was in retro around the moon. It was retrograde around the moon. So the moon wouldn't come up over the horizon. It, uh, it wouldn't come up over the horizon that way. That picture was actually rotated. When they took it, it was rotated 90 degrees, and the moon was coming up this way over the horizon. Ah. It, but it was edited because, you know, if you see the Earth coming out from the, the horizon sideways, that's not like the average person is going to look at that and be like, why is it going sideways? You know? So they made it look like how you would view it from the ground with the, the horizon of the moon relative to the bottom of the screen. Right. right. That's that, that, I, that image is actually 90 degrees. I'm 100 yeah. percent OK with that. Like absolutely mm -hmm. editing yep. an image in that way. Totally fine. Where I start to jump off board. And this is like we could get into like philosophically. Wow. They brought that up really quick. There, there you yeah, go. Good, nice, Kevin. good job, Kevin. <laughs> uh, see, yeah. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. We can get, yeah, like, picture we can get is sideways. philosophical really quick here. Like when it comes to making a photograph, I strive to basically be an equivalent of what your eyes would see of course minus the lens in terms of uh color and exposure and all of that that said sometimes you shoot a composite and you know it's like a it's like the, the rocket streak with the stars in the background and sometimes you can yep. you can get that in a single image sometimes you have to combine multiple images to get that which isn't real but if you mm -hmm post an image like that and say, this is a two frame composite, this long of an exposure, blah, blah, blah. If you're clear about what it is, by all means. Yeah. I even see that sometimes like on photographer Twitter or everything app or whatever. Um, they're like, oh, is this a single frame? Like, tell us how you made this picture. I know. I, I see that sometimes. I know exactly who you're talking about. And, yeah, yeah. And we love them for it. At least I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I, I, I get it. Like, they want to understand how it was made. And it's like, now, wait a second. I know that you had to pull some shenanigans to make that image work. Right. And it's, it's like that gradient between art and science here is exactly how things were versus i've made things different to be better or enhance colors or whatever and that there's a middle ground even where i've changed things to bring out details so that we can see more science from this mm -hmm. like oh yeah we're viewing this in just a red filter because then you can see that this plant is reflecting whatever right like that's still valid science to to view it through that lens no pun intended, um, but it's, it's just people that come through and say, oh, it's all made up. Everything's made up. Everything's a lie because you touched that image. Like, come on. Right. Really? Right. It's a spectrum like anything. Pay EJ, up. I, das, I never up, knew that. Pay about... up for the pun token. What? Pun token? <laughs> yeah. Pay up for the pun token. Jack, what were you saying? I don't have any pun uh, tokens. No, I never knew that about the Apollo 8 moonrise <laughs> image. So I have I'm, a water. I'm simultaneously. Th <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm simultaneously thankful that you that you illuminated me on that and i'm also kind of mad about it because you, santa claus <laughs> once again santa claus isn't real easter bunny's not real it's like what's going on what of course of course they are man what oh are you yeah, talking no, about? they're totally real they're totally real it's definitely not your parents <laughs> hey at least at least i guess it says something because if they had taken it the right way to get that whole landscape wouldn't they have been taking the photo of earthrise and like 
this mode with their cell phone on the spacecraft. No vertical video. Like portrait vertical video, and then they turn no vertical it video. It has it has no. it has a place. <laughs> And that the but, that, I mean, that place is the Jack, phone. to be fair, Das was just saying, don't, don't, don't do, don't get upset about that. He was just yeah. saying that a second ago. I'm just, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, if, it is EJ, what it is. at this point, you know me pretty well. I get upset about the most mundane things. So, you know what? <laughs> it's it's on brand for me. Yeah, nice. all right. That's fair. Hey, y'all, let me, let me say thanks to some folks real quick, because some people are skipping ahead in the show to the uh, sub segment, I guess, the five-year thing and the one million subs. Uh, Ninja Decimator. You have to say it that way. Yeah, you got to add the lasers, too. You got to add the lasers. The lasers? It's not like, like swords or something. Uh, Ninja Decimator did a $100 super. I'm just going for 100 We're going to round it up. Um, $99.99, $100 super chat, just saying congrats on 1 million subs ninja decimator thank you so much for the support thanks for showing up for the shows and supporting all the different wacky things that we do ranging from friday edition of this week in space flight to super serious launch coverage we do that sometimes right sometimes for varying definitions of super serious sometimes <laughs> nice uh, but I wanted to hit that real quick, Ninja Decimator. Thank you so much for the support. We've got some other ones through. Coco Cats was gifting some red team memberships and stuff like that. I see some questions too. I'm going to pause those for now. Uh, SA. Here's one from SA. Congrats on one million subs, you guys. Rock it out of the park. Thanks for all the work. Hope to meet you guys at a launch. Thanks, SA, for the support there too. So I'm going to I'm going to pause some of the other ones. I'll come back to them. But uh, black holes, how do they work? Now we've got magnets in black holes. I don't know if they cancel out and they become easier to understand, or if it's like magnets, nobody knows how those work. Black holes, nobody knows how those work. Yeah, it's just magic. It's just all magic. (laughs) Sufficiently advanced, I guess not really technology, but at least science here at this point. So uh, what are we talking about next here? Sort of jumping around. (laughs) What do we got? Some starship news that occurred? I'm scrolling. Yeah, there was uh, some yeah. static fires of good old ship <laughs> 29. Two yeah. static fires. Two times yeah, the fun. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah. And uh, also, Booster 4 has been scrap, scrapped. It, it is no longer of this Earth. Well, I guess it's of this Earth still, but it's in pieces now. Uh, to shreds, you say. <laughs> to shreds, you say. <laughs> I like it. We're like, there was a static fire, and then they're cutting up a booster in the, high, the mega bay here. So... <laughs> Yep, um, but no, it's it's really good to see 29 uh, get static fire tested. It's yet another step towards Flight 4. Obviously, there's still a whole bunch of stuff that needs to happen before Flight 4 can happen, not least of yep. which the conclusion of the SpaceX-led in, uh, mishap investigation along with the FAA. So a lot of, a lot of stuff to still happen, but we're, well, we, SpaceX is rapidly advancing um, much faster in this case than we saw after Flight 2. So, yeah. really good to see. So, the first static fire was a six engine firing, looked really clean. I think it was like a five second ish duration. Uh, you can see it there, looking real good. Uh, and then uh, that was on Monday of the week, and then Tuesday, nothing. And then Wednesday, single engine static. Um, same as Ship 26 and Ship 28 did to simulate that in space burn of a raptor engine so um is that what they said like they put that on a tweet or something that they were simulating an in space burn or something is that the orbit burn i don't know if if they if spacex tweeted that um that's a good question but the thing is is the, the fueling timelines for uh for that burn and the way that 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 the ship is loaded and behaves for that burn is much different than a standard static fire. And it followed the exact same um, milestones and process that we saw with ship 26 and ship 28, which we did have confirmation from them that, that that was a thing. Uh, Yeah. Okay. They did tweet it. It says static fire of a single Raptor engine using the header tanks, using the header tanks on flight four starship. So they didn't say landing burn in this tweet, but it matches the other, uh, not landing burn, the other in space burn, uh, tweets and tests that we've seen them do. So pretty neat. Yeah. And that was something they didn't get to in flight three, um, because of the way flight three was going and the loss of control. They didn't get to do their relight and their orbit changing burn because I, Quite frankly, it was out of control at the time. It would not have been a good idea to do a burn to try to relight the engines because it could end up, who knows where it would have ended up, right? Um, yep. So continuing practicing 
those with mm. the next flight candidate here, right, EJ? Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, they they got to make sure they got to verify that that works. I mean, you were talking about a loss of control. There was clearly a roll rate on Starship when oh, we saw yeah. it. I mean, that doesn't mean those on-orbit views weren't amazing. <laughs> I still look at those. It's like just looked those up cold turkey the other day. I'm like, yep, that's still cool. All right. Anyway, but like you, there's a roll there was a roll rate on Starship and that roll rate it's not just about like careening off course, right? It's Yeah. It's about settling the propellants in the tank. You have to have some kind of ullage or some kind of acceleration on the vehicle to be able to get all the propellants at the bottom of those header tanks, even with the header tanks. I mean, probably even more with the header tanks, right? Because, you know, you have that, they're, they're going, they have that line that goes all the way down, all the way through the main fuel tanks, all the way down to the engines, right? Yeah. Think about it like, you know, for the, for the people in chat, think about it like if you, you know, you have, uh, you know, you go get a soft drink from a, your favorite fast food place and you're at, you're at the bottom and, you know, you do the noise, you know, like that, that sippy noise, like don't rockets don't do that very well. You need, yeah. you need liquid going into liquid fuel engines. So it wasn't just loss of control, like, but you're not going to be able to settle those propellants either. So it's, it's probably better that they're verifying it, but I, I mean, I'm not, you know, it's good that they verify it for 29, but you know, that, that could be a reason why 28 didn't do. It's not just, you know, it's just going to careen off and Jebediah Kerman itself somewhere <laughs> off in the space. You, you know, nice. yeah. Hey, that was a good adjective. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't pretend like you don't. Golf Did clap, it just right? do a Kerbal? I'll golf like, clap. Yeah, I'll golf yeah. clap. <laughs> exactly. All right. But it, you have to, you have to make sure those propellants are settled too. And I'm not sure they had that with those, with the roll rate. Now, would a roll rate settle the propellants? Yeah, it might, but it would swirl the propellants too. Prop vortexing is not good because yeah. then your propellant turns into a gyroscope and you know, angular momentum does its thing. That's not, yeah. that's not ideal. You don't want that. So I, I wonder, like, I always, like, when I see announcements or anything, like, oh, flight light conditions, space light conditions, you know, like, when I see things like that, I'm always like, mm -hmm. really? It's not in a vacuum. Like, how can you really say that? But they're really talking about, oh, we're going to use a single burn. It's going to be fueled in this way. It's going to consume fuel from here, I guess, is the right mm -hmm. way to say it. Um, yep. As close as you can get it without having a big vacuum chamber that you can fire rocket engines into, right? It, it's like what uh, Tim Crane at Intuitive Machines said. There's no test stand on, on Earth to be able to simulate cryogenic propellant burns in space. There's nothing like that that exists. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you... you you know, especially with SpaceX's rapid iterative prototyping, it's really just get it up there and let's go. Let's see what happens. You know, it's only a failure if we don't learn something from it. Yeah. Make sure you can do it safely, right? But uh, just yeah, try yeah. to get real <laughs> yep. say boots on the ground. It's not really boots on the ground data. It's empirical experimental data, not mm -hmm. theoretical or calculated or simulated or whatever, right? That's how SpaceX does things. So mm -hmm. anyways, um, so we got the two static fires done, the six engine static fire and the one engine. I, I actually, I had to press the button here and then look up at Starbase Live on, on our multi-view to see if the ship had rolled because I was busy today and it looks like the ship's all the way back in the barn now, huh? You had to look to see if the ship was rolled, huh? I did, you, yeah. So I was you're like, telling Wait a me second. you weren't out there with Sean and I until like 3 a.m. I wasn't. I was not. I was looking up and I was like, is the ship still there? I better make sure before I open my mouth. <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. It was a good roll. They they basically started moving right at the start of the window. Um, yeah. And it was, a, it was a nice, beautiful night. We got some really great imagery. So members, if you have not checked the community tab lately, uh, be sure you keep your eyes on that because there's some really cool shots from both Sean and myself that have gone up. I did the uh, I did the thing where I took this is like so on topic. I took a uh, multi image composite of the entire ship at like 600 millimeters from various yep. angles and then stitched the photos together. So not a real photo. It's a composite. But um, but that lets you see like insane level of detail down to each and every single tile. Um, so, yeah, that, that was that was pretty nifty. I was I was in a really good mood. Um, after the roll last night, just because the night rolls can be really challenging from a photography perspective. You know, we don't have the, the light that you get from uh, the sun, but yeah, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe it was the moon. Maybe it was the amount of lights at the production site from the new mega bay. Um, but the, the lighting and everything, it was just, it was, uh, it was beautiful beautiful rollback and then and then they're they like parked the ship in front of the mega bay uh for a little bit while they worked on the um 
on the counterweights on the SPMT, you know, like they do. And yeah. every single time a Border Patrol or Sheriff car drove by with their flashers, you would get those like sick reflections on the stainless steel, like blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, green. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll have a day. We'll have a yeah from the border patrol. Um, okay. um, but we'll have we'll have a video up uh, tomorrow morning, a daily with all of the cool roll footage and whatnot in it. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. But nice. yeah, ship twenty nine back in the barn, ready to get buttoned up for flight. Hopefully here in the next. Month? I don't month? know. What? Question mark? Yeah, I don't know. Nice. I mean, I'd say we're a little ways out. <laughs> we, we gotta, well, we gotta ask the question, of course. Like everyone, that's I'm looking at the question key right here too. People want to know. People always want to know when flight four, when next flight. Um, Excuse me. When hop? Yeah, when hop. When hop. When hop. Com. That's. Uh, Do you know the website? I just renewed the website. We just paid for that web the web domain again. <laughs> wait, wait. What? 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 Okay. All right. To, Typing noises. Yeah. Go to. Win- you can go to winhop.com. Like, don't spell it right. Do W E N H O P. This is this is also very on topic for today's show because it is that is like OG. That is like I think if not pre SN eight. Uh, right around SN8. In fact, I think it was pre-SN8, if I'm not mistaken. It happened sometime around 5 or 6, where Michael yep. Michael did a Michael and bought that domain. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how many Do you know how many domains we have, though? How many? It's not just WinHop. Oh, yeah, he bought a lot of them. He's Michael. There's like a bunch of Win domains. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I know WinSoyuse is one, and I'm like, who has ever typed WinSoyuse.com into a browser window to try and figure out WinSoyuse is going to launch? Wake up, babe. Brand really? new sentence just dropped. A bit of a stretch, honestly. <laughs> We just renewed them all, though. Like we just uh, paid for the domain registration renewals on all those. So, yep. Didn't know oh. about that. Now I know about that. Not upset. Not, you go. Not upset. No, nope. oh, <laughs> it's good. a thing. That's that's pretty cool. It's pretty funny. Um, the uh, so so the other part of it, right? At this point, if I'm not mistaken, we're two weeks out from Gwen Shotwell saying about six weeks. Right? Wasn't there some commentary where Gwyn was saying like, oh yeah, we're hoping in about six weeks or something like that. And then even Elon, like what? Elon said, well, maybe it'll do six weeks. Um, But we're two weeks into that. So potentially is it four weeks until Starship might fly again? I mean, you you know, maybe. I mean, you can look at what Gwen and Elon said and that's fine, but you know, that might be right, it might not be right. I, I always say look at the hardware. Yeah. Look for the hardware. Are we anywhere near a boost, a, a Starship launching? Probably not. You know why? Because like you, you see that you see that picture to to you know my left stage right. That the, there's no there's no booster on the pad. So yeah. I mean I'm not I'm not trying to say SpaceX couldn't move that thing out there really really quickly, but that probably you you kind of need that to do a flight test, right? Like, and I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence either. The booster isn't there, which means it's not ready. I mean we we know. That, you know, they're going to take the booster, they're going to put it on there, they're going to do a static fire, they're going to do wet dress rehearsal. There's a bunch of steps yeah. that we've seen from the other flight tests, right? It's a bunch of steps. And one of those steps included putting the booster on the orbital launch mount. Like, that's, a, that's a whole probably thing. Isn't, probably isn't news to anybody, but yeah, I mean, we're still a good ways out. You always look at the hardware. I mean, that, and that, that, ju- that applies to anybody. That applies yeah. to any, it's not just SpaceX, anyone. Because anyone can say, you know, Das, I mean, you know good and well. Anybody could say, oh, yeah, we're going to launch our payload to the moon in six months. All right. Where's your payload? All right. Do you, you have hardware for us to look? Do you yeah, all know exactly. we make decisions that way sometimes? Yeah. So sometimes it's like, oh, what should we cover? What should we do a video on? What should we do a story on? And there are so many companies that have ideas in PowerPoints and renderings. And I'm sitting here in meetings like, I don't know. Do they have hardware for us to see yet? Yeah. Like, if we can't go and visit the hardware and walk around the factory floor and look at like, that's a great rendering of the space station, but I don't think we're going to do a video on your rendering of the space station. <laughs> um, I, I will take responsibility. I have shot down multiple videos because it's like, well, show us the hardware. I'd love to do something with this, but let us come crawl around your space station structure like it's a jungle gym or something, right? Yeah, props to, um, props to Bigelow for literally actually yes. letting me do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a t- that was a whole thing when you went out to bed. R.I.P. Bigelow. Yeah, R.I.P. Bigelow. 
Oh, uh, but what, what we were just talking about with the booster not being ready to roll back out, uh, one thing that is happening today, in fact, is those damaged booster QD flex hoses are being uh. reinstalled on the orbital launch mountain on the booster QD. So uh, they are hopefully getting into a... Yeah, you can see them right there. Yeah, there we go. You can see them there right there on, tra- on the right hand trailer side. one. Right below the chopsticks, uh, there you can see one of the flex hoses already installed. So there you go. They are working towards getting them out ready for the return of the booster. And I suspect that that is the, the long pole. So there you go. Neat. Yeah, they tore the, the big insulated lines, those sort of bent lines that come out of the back. That's what carries all the consumables into the booster, the bottom of the booster, right? The QD plate attaches, blah, 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 right? Um, but after Flight 3, we saw them doing a ton of work in there. There's a huge armored shroud that goes over the back of that whole assembly there and covers up those lines. And they took that huge armored shroud off, and they actually extracted some of those lines, especially the big ones. We, I wasn't really sure. Like, I didn't know if the line was broken or if it was just the insulation that was making us look at some weird angles. You ran around the backside and took some pictures, Jack. Was, was there a line that was actually disconnected? Oh, yeah. Hang on. Or was it just yeah, an yeah. insulation hang thing? Hang on. Let me, let me grab a picture for old Kevy boy there. Hang on just a second. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old Kevy boy. No old, one's ever called him that ever. Old Kevy boy. He's our he's our boy. We love him. We're proud dads. All three of us. It's, it's a new sitcom on Fox every Tuesday. It's called Three Proud Dads. <laughs> I feel like the the pipes are calling is the next line after Oh Kevy boy. But whatever. Um, here we go. I, the pipes. The pipes are calling. In fact, the rockets. The there are the tanks. I guess the tanks are calling. The tanks. The tanks are calling. There you go, Kevin. It's in control center. Oh no! Uh, so it's hard, oh. it's hard to say. I didn't see them immediately after they removed the back of the BQD shroud, so yeah. it, it's it's hard to say. But if we get this image up, uh, let's give Kevin just a second to do it. If we yeah. if you take a look at it, um, it's there. There is a difference between the two flex hoses, and there's two large diameter hoses. I assume one go. is for oxygen and one is for methane. And look, what can you see here? You can see one hose look, down at the bottom of the hose. You can see it still has a flange on it, right? Where it would attach yep. to the GSE. The yep. other hose does not have a flange attached to it. And in fact, looks... You can see the flange. Yes, the flange is still attached to the OLM side. So did they just pull that off? Did it get liberated during launch? I don't know because I wasn't there right after they removed the BQD and started messing with those hoses. But I yeah. do think the difference in the state of these two hoses. I mean, ideally, you pull off the flange with the hose, I think. I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist, but so maybe one was full on damaged um, and, and, and dislodged in that way. I, this is like pure speculation, though, but those are the, those are the hoses we are talking about. What, well, what do you think, EJ? You're the, you're the GSC guy. What do you think? Uh, that's broken. Yeah, that's 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 what I think. That's That's broken. So those lines, I mean, you can't see it because they... You know they have the insulators over it that this that kind of space blanket stuff that's on the outside of that but yeah those lines are braided there it's a braided steel line uh and th- the reason why they do that amongst other reasons is for thermal expansion and contraction like you we always see the olm van and we see them chilling down the lines whenever they're doing anything with commodities on uh, on the orbital launch mount and yeah if you look like yeah, Kevin, bring us in, bring us in a little bit closer. If you look at the, the I just the, I just the, put a closer image in uh, in in Discord as well. Oh yeah, there Excellent. we go. Yeah, if you look at the metal part that's still attached to the flange, it, there's like a a flared out part mm-hmm. at the very top of that where where it would connect into the hose. That that's um that's a press fit. So they press fit the braid into that into that metal collar right there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's th- that's not supposed to be like that. Now, once again, whether that was the pad or whether that was anything else, I'm not sure. I mean, the, y- it's definitely not supposed to do that. I'll, I'll tell you that right now from what yeah. I know about pressure lines, cryogenic pressure lines. It's definitely not, definitely not supposed to do that. Uh, you but- see their FOD control, too? Look yeah, at their they FOD put, control. They, they, they treat FOD control like I treat leftovers in my fridge. They've got, like, <laughs> saran wrap over the top of it. <laughs> hey, yeah, it looks like they, a space tape or something. Hey, it's going to work, dude. Get it in some calf tape. If Whatever, it's stupid it's and it works, it's not stupid. 
I, mean, I think some of it might be that aluminum like sealing tape or something like literally almost duct tape. It's like speed tape, like not tape the, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Not the gray duct tape, yeah. but the aluminum duct tape. Um, but yeah. they've, they've capped it off to keep FOD from getting in there, I guess, because if it gets in there, then you got to clean it back out again. And you don't want to yeah. be pumping that into your rocket, right? Yeah, just to just to take a second to yeah. appreciate the job that these two flex hoses have to do. They are loading 5,000 tons of propellant into this insanely large rocket in the course of like 50 minutes. And not only that, they're not fueling the tanks from the middle or the top, it's from the bottom of the tank. So as the weight of the propellant gets heavier and heavier, these hoses and all of those fittings have to resist that 5,000 tons of propellant, you know, pushing back down on it, all the pumps in the tank farm, all of that. It's, it's just like, yes, it's two hoses. Why do we care so much about two hoses? These are extremely critical pieces of hardware. They're really important. And they, they have a pretty, like, crazy job like that they're, that they're being asked to do so ej i didn't even know that they would be press fit like that but given the pressures I mean, they have to deal with uh, that makes perfect sense that's fascinating well yeah. the the part that flexes is the part that's press fit i mean if they could go with a solid solid line here they probably would i mean we know that elon hates flanges but it has to move talk. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, you're dealing with thermal expansion and contraction, especially when you, they're slow filling the lines, to chill them down. And then high flow is going to really freeze up some stuff for sure. Uh, so the, the flexi bit is is press fit into the collar, you know, which is attached to the flange. Right. Uh, yeah. You, there's really not a good way to do that without the flexi hose. You, you, ne you need that. Uh, because it, this thing is like physically going to change shape when you start high flowing propellants through it. Yeah. We know that you know putting cryogenic cryogenic commodities through any type of ground service equipment can change the things. How about you know on the Artemis One mission where uh, they were flowing, they went into fast fill with the hydrogen on that core stage, and it untorqued the bolt. It untorqued the bolt. The bolt just came unscrewed. Yeah, and they sent the guy out there with a torque wrench, and he tightened that sucker right back down. <laughs> Red it team, does change things. Red team rolls up to the pad, gets on their radio, and is yep. like, "Yeah, there, that, that's your, that's your problem it's there. Like, that bolt's a little yeah. bit loose. I'm gonna tighten yeah. it." I'm yeah, fix it I was making cranking <laughs> motions there, but that's why like, you keep missing it. It's got the joke's gone. The joke's gone. Um, you know, I, it makes me want to go and look at connections for other quick disconnects and like the the arms that swing away from the rockets because Delta Four Heavy has tons of arms that swing away from the rockets. And it makes me want to look at the, the interface where you have the, the tower that doesn't move, right? And then you have the arm that swings back. How do other people do that interface? Do they have these flexible hoses like that where the hose is flexing? Do they have some sort of joint where the joint maybe rotates, but it's not a flexible thing? It's a hard fitting or something? I'm really curious how other rockets carry consumables like that and whether or not SpaceX's choice for these long flexible hoses that have to move when the entire cutie moves away from the rocket. Like, I wonder if that's different than other rockets have done it. I haven't gone to check. I need to go look. I think it's pretty it's standard. Usually, it's usually a flex joint. Uh, you don't want to go reinventing the wheel. And if it's one thing we know from what I was saying before, cryogenics don't play well with valves. They yeah. really, really don't. And it doesn't really matter. doesn't really matter the rocket. Uh, Hypergalls don't either for what it's worth. Um, but uh, yeah, it's usually does it like the thing that's popping into my head that everybody might understand is like a car's exhaust has like flex bits in yeah. it, you know, so because the exhaust gets hot, so it's going to expand and contract. This is the opposite of that, but you still have a flex bit. It, you still have flexi bits in there to deal with the expansion and contraction. Now for the swing arms that are rotated, it's kind of the same idea. Yeah. Um, you know, think like a proton pack, like Ghostbusters or something like, you know, it's it, it can move around, you know, it can swing back and forth. Right. But also I, even, even at the interface, like where the swing arm connects, there is a there's another bit of flexi hose that's attached to the carrier umbilical as well. I really want to go through there and, and look and see, like, is there a better way to do it? Or is it just, yeah, OK, other people use that. But Starship is carrying so much propellant into such a huge tank because Starship is the world's biggest rocket. So you got to solve the world's biggest problems. Right. Um, yep. I, I wonder if the materials and the design of those materials that support smaller, lesser rockets. Right. Like don't scale to Starship sizes like like there's Delta Four Heavy going. I was going to oh, say, yeah. I wonder those hoses that we were looking on the backside of the, the booster QD, when those have propellant in them, I wonder how much that length of hose weighs. 
How much do you think that weighs? I have no clue. Yeah, that's a really it's, good question. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, it's like, uh, so I mean, you got to think about it. Like every time one of those hoses detaches, it's like when you're, it's like if you're trying to wind up a garden hose and it still has water in it, it's just the propellants go everywhere. This yeah. is why like Falcon 9, for instance, does that, uh, does that vent the ga ground gas close out to avoid that exact problem because you don't want to spray oxidizer all over your rocket yep. on the outside. It's probably not good for it. I mean, rockets like Delta IV, they don't care, but that's for hydrogen purging. It's a little bit of a different reason. They do that on purpose. Yeah, it's, it's done on purpose. It's very, very much a thing that was implemented. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's purging out systems and stuff. You, you usually don't disconnect an umbilical that, that's full of propellant because, yeah, you'll fire hose the rocket with propellant on the outside. Generally a bad Chad, thing. I, don't know, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know if you guys knew this. The propellants need to be inside, not not outside. That's not good Not good for Well, they, they need to be inside until they need to be outside. Yeah. Like, you yeah, need yeah, them to yeah. be yeah. able to go from inside to outside <laughs> at some point. It yeah. needs to be in a very controlled manner that they're going from the inside to the outside. Not in an uncontrolled manner. So. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> want think, it to I explode we in one location, and the explosion needs to be going in one direction. If exactly. it's going in multiple directions, you, you got a little bit of a problem there. <laughs> well, it wants to go in multiple directions. And the entire job of the engine bell in the atmosphere <laughs> is to make it go in a specific direction. Make um, it we do can do an entire show on that. In one so. direction. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, folks, I'm, I'm going through Super Chats and stuff like that sort of in between the major topics. We're going to hit some more questions about Starship's status. And then we will say thanks to some support. And then we will go on to our next topic here. So let me uh, see if we don't have some questions about Starship. I mean, we were just talking about... <laughs> what is this? You don't remember? Well, I, I, I drew it, but what is, are we supposed to talk about this now? It's SN5. <laughs> what? It's a, it's a highly <laughs> advanced simulation of uh, SN5's historic fight. <laughs> it's even got an exclamation point, because it was super excited about the fact that it hopped. Um, let me look at some questions in chat here real quick. And uh, ah, Jack, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Yeah, that's why I put it in there. Um, From Luke, Static Fire, yeah. Yep. Let's talk about Static Fires. Is this the last Static Fire we see from the Starship suborbital pad, or uh, are they going to be moving these Static Fires to Massey's in the future? Where do you think we are with that from your ground experience out there? Well, they are moving Static Fires for the ship, specifically the ship, not the booster, to Massey's. That has been in work for some time now. Um, yeah. Whether or not this will be the last Static Fires we've seen at Pad B... Uh, I don't know. It, it could very well be the final static fires for Pad B. It could also be the case that the, the static fire stand at Massey's takes longer to to get up and running. Um, frankly, I have no idea what their what their timelines for Massey's are. And it, like put it this way, do you think for Flight Four they will static fire Ship Thirty? Maybe just to show off. Yeah. And so if they do, I think that happens at the launch site. If they don't, I think by the time Flight 4 is done, we have a pretty high likelihood of the static fire stand at Massey's being ready. That said, I have no freaking clue, um, again, their timelines on the, on the static fire stand at Massey's. So it could be another six months. Who knows? I, I have no idea. But yeah. that's sort of my thinking about it. Because I was just saying last night, like, oh, man, I'm really bummed we don't get more static fires um, from Pad B. Because Pad B is a great spot. To, to, to see static fires. It's just it's it's right there. Um, there's not a lot of of, of obstruction. So, Time out. Yeah. Does it? Why is the NSF's camera site not listed in this over like this overhead view? That's our site right there on the side of the road. You can see the gravel pad we have installed. It didn't get labeled. Ryan. Ryan. Ryan needs to put NSF highway site there. How dare you, Ryan? Um, I, ass I assume we're looking at this because there's the new land. There's the suborbital pad where they were just doing the firing. But uh, they built a parking lot back in there. The parking lot lasted like a month if that, before they yeah. tore it out, right? Yep. <laughs> um, but that's where the static fires are happening on the suborbital side of the pad there. That suborbital side has become what seems to be uh, Tower 2, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And it, it's, it's classic SpaceX fashion to build a piece of infrastructure and then literally immediately tear it up and rip put it some, back out again, put, some, put something else there. So it, it fits the, it fits the trend, you know, we're, we're on brand here for SpaceX. Um, but 
I actually, dude, I, you know, yeah, it is on brand. Absolutely. I'm not disagreeing that. I actually really appreciate that SpaceX is just like, yeah, build a parking lot there. We need a parking lot. Oh, no, never mind. Rocket launch pad now. I appreciate how their workspaces is like a blackboard. They're not afraid to just erase the whole thing and just, yep, start over. Yeah. I actually think that's super cool. It helps us illustrate the process. Like, it, you can really get into, like, it's really makes it a lot easier for us to digest what the heck SpaceX is doing, especially if you're a tank watcher, right? You can really think about this stuff and think like, oh, okay, you know, suborbital pad A, they they scrap that, right? And then you see all the components going over to to Massey's, right? And now now say you know pad B, like, and now you know they want a second tower because we see the tower segments at Sanchez. Like, it, it, it's actually, I think it's super useful to see to, to see SpaceX's process like kind of out in the open. It really gives you a good finger on the pulse, and you can really kind of understand what they're trying to do. Yeah, I, I love that. I think that's great. Yeah, to you be know, clear, something... I'm not trying to hate on it. Uh, I think it's no, no, I, I yeah, it's I got pretty, you. it's pretty nifty. Uh, you know, it's like the kind of thing where um, corporations can be so. There's a lot of momentum in 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 a in corporate anything in any business. You know, it's hard to to move fast and break things, and that's part of the reason why we lives we love SpaceX is because they do have yep. still that ability to be like. You know what? No more HPUs. Or you know what? Now there's chines. Now there's hot staging. Now it's not a parking lot anymore. It's an orbital launch pad. So yep. yeah, that's why we love them. Yeah, it's yeah, it's curious. Cool. Like, can you imagine if a government agency worked that way? Right? You would all be so up in arms about how they were wasting your taxpayer dollars. They're poorly managed. They're poorly planned. They're not doing. They have no clue what they're doing. They paid to build a parking lot there, and then they tore it back out, and then they're going to put lunch. Can you imagine if another organization was doing that same sort of thing and how people would be up in arms? But because SpaceX gets results with working that way, I think they have a pretty good track record of getting results. Like the the mentality when SpaceX does things like that versus almost anybody else that would do that other, other than a small new space company, right? SpaceX can do that because they've proven they can get results that way. Like agree or disagree with that statement? Agree. Oh, very much agree. Hold up. Let SpaceX cook. Yeah, let SpaceX cook. Let them do their thing. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. It's just... God, like imagine anybody else working that way and how everybody would be up in arms about how terrible the management is and the lack of planning and all this sort of stuff. And we're like, yeah, tear out the parking lot, put a lunch pad there. Like we're cheering <laughs> them on when they Fill do it. Fill another one. Yeah. There's a story Take about three. palm trees they've installed on a <laughs> road at Starbase too. Fill it up again. Um, <laughs> Fill, no, it, Fill it up again. <laughs> but for real, uh, you know, and that said, there's – I'm not going to say there's nothing wrong with other development styles. Every there's you know every development style has its merit. I'm not a software person, but there's what yeah. agile and waterfall or whatever. There's different kinds of of oh. software development or project management. Um, like Vulcan, perfect example. Vulcan flew great on its first try. Yeah, it took a little bit of time to get done, but ULA nailed it on their first try. Completely different approach to developing a rocket, uh, but a valid one. So you know everyone everything has its place. I think uh, it, from the perspective of a Texas tank watcher, though, uh, I'm, gl yeah. I'm glad that we have plenty of action and plenty of changes rapidly happening so that we can constantly try and read the tea leaves and divine what the actual heck we're looking at at any given point in time. Yep. Tea leaves. Tea leaves. Tea leaves. What? I think we could talk about tea. We're going to talk about tea in a little bit when we have a special guest come on. Um, <laughs> and how iced tea with sugar in it is the best type of tea ever. I'm kidding. Uh, we're probably all fired now. The uh, just last you. thing I want to talk about real quick, <laughs> just me. <laughs> um, it just happened. I want to see, and I don't know if this would ever be a thing. I don't even know if it's possible to do on the ground. But I wonder if it's possible for SpaceX to do a flight-like engine turnaround like a relight yep on the stand yep right like could they light all six engines and do you're not going to do a full duration static fire because they don't have the infrastructure to deal with the thrust for that long right but you light all six engines and then you go back and then you recycle in the appropriate amount of time as if you were going to do an orbit burn you're not allowed to get anything else off the ground off the gse i don't even know if you're disconnected from the gse if that's even possible and then could you turn back around and fire the starship again to make sure that all those systems are working the way that they should. Do you think that's something they can do? Yes. In fact, they have done it. Um, yeah. Maybe not I was gonna say. in exact that way, exactly that way. Right. But with SN9, they fired, I think, three static fires in a single day. It's rare yep. that they do multiple static fires in a single day, but they have done it. That said, 
I do wonder if whatever process would be necessary in between the six engine static fire and the one engine static fire on the same day, notionally, like to detank the ship and get it into a condition that approximates what it would be doing with a single engine static fire in terms of propellant load pressures, temperatures, all of that. Uh, I do wonder if whatever it takes to go from six engine to one engine sort of negates some useful test data based on how they have to get there and that's why they do it as two separate tests but i am so not a rocket scientist and i can see ej making squinty eyes at me right now so i'm going to stop talking no 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 and, no. and let ej no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no you're no you're absolutely right uh, what i'm sorry i think think out loud i guess um you think Jack, with your face uh yeah uh <laughs> jeez what are we? What were we talking about? Rails. Rails. Anyway, um, Moon train. We were talking. We were talking about relights, engine relights on the no, stand. You talked about SN nine, but that wasn't the first thing that popped into my head. Back in the back a little while ago on McGregor Live, we saw them instantly relight a Raptor engine. And now yeah. I get it. Raptor isn't the entirety of Starship, Dawson. I know that's what you're talking about, but I, I mean, it's very clear that they could just shut Raptor off and turn it right back on. We saw them do it in like a ten second interval, like. Full thrust, off, 10 seconds, back on. Back on now, again, yep. I don't, the I, don't know what, I don't know what they're doing to do that, I, like freewheeling a, a pre-burner or something. Like, it's pretty crazy. But, yeah, I mean, they can clearly just flip this thing on and turn it back off again. I, You're, you're going to run into other problems if you try to do that with a Starship, like, I don't know, hydraulic hammering or yeah, si- yeah. like a siphon you said- uh, causing cavitation in the tanks or something. But, I mean... Yeah, it's very clear that they could do that, which is insane considering it's staged combustion cycle, full flow, and you can just you know, flip it on and flip it back off. Yeah, all right, whatever. You said yeah, freewheeling yeah. a turbo pump, and I immediately thought, Ghost Ride the Turbo Pump! I don't know why. Ghost Ride the Turbo Pump! Ghost I, I could, Ride the Turbo Pump? <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about what they were trying to do. Like, how, how could you get that thing to do that? And keep in mind, this is EJ's wild theories. Like, that's the only thing that I could think of. Like, they're... They're doing something maybe with the pressure, uh, uh, autogenous pressurization to keep those keep the turbo pumps freewheeling, right? And then they flip the engine right back on, right? Because an engine's got a spool. The no matter if you're using you know open cycle, closed cycle, full flow, staged, or or just a gas generator, yeah, you're still you still have to spool the turbines in there. The t- it, turbo pumps or pre burners, you still have to spool the power heads. Yeah, so you can't it's- just. Flip an engine off and flip it back on. You're going to get turbo lag. Or There's moving lag. parts that have to get up to speed. And Bingo. we see that. Like, everybody's like, oh, a spin prime. Who cares, right? Well, the spin prime is super important. Like, all of the things that need to happen to get to a spin prime flowing prop with all of the moving parts through the engine. Like, there, there's a reason mm-hmm. they practice doing that, right? Um, it's not like a light switch where you just turn your switch on and off. Yeah, and the engine exactly. lights and doesn't light. That's right? how the Apollo engines, that's how the, uh, the CFSM engines worked. On yep. the uh, Apollo CSM, you those you could just turn on and off like a switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they exactly. didn't have any pumps or anything. It's right? just those are straight pressure-fed hypergolics. Yeah, yep, you, yep. yeah, exa- yeah. You could just flip it on. I mean, even like RCS is usually modulated on yep. spacecraft. They they don't ever just uh, hold down the H key. It's like duty cycle, basically. Yeah, it's like, exactly. <laughs> they, <laughs> like that's how it fires. Yep, they modulate them. Mm-hmm, for, could y'all hear that? I could. Yeah. Oh, we heard it. Oh yeah, we heard it. <laughs> Should make that noise again. <laughs> it's it's not really that way though. You're really it's good at it. Psh- you're remarkably like, good at it. I'm, I gotta say, <laughs> it's an artifact of being able to roll your R's. I guess I can't I do know. it. I still can't do it. <sighs> er, can't, I you, can't. You're in Brownsville. You should be able to roll your R's. Yeah. I, Wait I, a minute, amigo. You cannot roll your R's. N- not really. I can sometimes, mm. but oh, okay. Puss in Boots from Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I can um, roll the R's. Don't be jealous because I am not near Texas, but I can roll them like crazy. There you go. We still have lots of stuff to talk about. Um, I need to say thanks to some people here, too. So, Rails, everybody, Rails, back in the lanes here. Uh, let's say thanks to some more people. I think we got those. Wilbo Tiberius Baggins. Good old Wilbo. That's an name awesome for name. you. Good old Wilbo. Um, did a 20 curly L super chat after the scrub yesterday. You guys hit a million. That's true. Delta four. It's truly scrubs paying the bills there. Jazz hands. Um, Delta four scrubbing. Jazz, right? jazz hands for a million. Jazz hands for a million. Come on. Do it. Peer pressure. Jazz hands, jazz, for, hands? jazz hands for a million. Come on. Do it. Jazz hands. No, not going to happen. <laughs> All right. I got to go. 
<laughs> okay, bye, Jack. Thanks. Um, so y'all chat about it. Listening to you was enlightening, moving, and uplifting. Hot coals, broken glass. This was your quote, Jack, actually. Jack's left. Jack might be crawling across hot clothes to set a camera for a live stream right now. Um, I'd do well, it. He might have gone to the bathroom. I would do it. I'd do it. Er, I, I knew that would get him back. <laughs> um, hot coals, broken glass, not for me, but I'll wear a kilt. You inspire so many, Wilbo. Oh, Jack. Well said. The, the real question is, would you crawl across hot coals made of broken glass while wearing a kilt? You know what? I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Drum roll, please. No. Um, Wilbo Tiberius Baggins, Baggins, thank you so much for the support. That actually came in 50 minutes ago, five zero minutes ago. Um, by the way, SpaceX, can we put a no parking zone where this lift, United Rentals lift, is you know parked what? there? Like we had our cameras all set. Jack? You know what I did, Dust? This is my this is my slow mo shot of the six engine. Uh, a second ago, yep. we were looking at my slow mo of the one engine. Um, what I did. Is immediately after that six engine test, I went on Amazon and ordered some 12 foot USB A to C cables so I can put my camera. <laughs> put it up on the pole. Yeah, further away to get out of the way of the lift. Because, oh, God. Uh, yeah. And, and, okay, okay. Now let's get really into the weeds here. Really into the weeds sure. here. And this is. This is important. This is behind the scenes. This is the kind of thing that uh, member support allows us to do is to have this infrastructure at the trailer to allow me to remotely operate a slow mo camera. So that's awesome. Um, but here's here's why I have a smooth brain and I don't have a wrinkle brain. For the six engine static fire, I shot the close up that you were just looking at. Close up, good. Shows engine start. Yes. Um, I'm looking for the close up. But but for the six engine static fire, they loaded uh, basically a full tank, I think, of liquid oxygen, which meant that when the very dusty from all the mid bay demo dust ship 29 fired its engines. A whole bunch of dust and ice and condensation came off the ship, and it was beautiful. So, yeah. So, for the six engine, I shot a very tight close up, and then a GoPro um, shot that's way too wide to see the detail in the cool condensation slow mo. For the single engine static fire, I was mad at myself for that decision, and so I said, All right, for the single, I'm going to shoot a wide. But guess what? For the single, they don't load anywhere near as much liquid oxygen, and most of the dust from the mid bay demo has already been shaken off the vehicle. So while this shot is cool, it would have been way cooler as a much more cl like I should have reversed. I should have reversed the shots. This should have been the close up. The other one should have been wide. I have a smooth brain. There you go. There's your behind the scenes. My nice. my phone has a camera. My phone has a camera. You can take pictures with it. You can even stream with your phone camera, EJ. We should yeah, talk sometimes. Yeah. I bet you're an Android oh. person. You're an Android person, aren't you? <laughs> No. Oh, good. We're friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Still, yeah, still friends. <laughs> hey, you know what, Dust? Hey. Unity Intercom works great on my phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not a good thing to be to be shackled to Unity Intercom. <laughs> hey, let me let me keep saying thanks to some folks here, y'all. Uh, SA, I think I got this one earlier. Congrats on one million subs. Yeah, I think I got that one earlier. Uh, Musical Wolves did a super chat 39 minutes ago now. Five years ago was Hoppy at doing a static fire. We we're going to talk about that. Hopper. Hang 10. Hopper. Hang 5. Hopper. It says Hoppy in the super yeah, chat, Yeah, it's though. Hopper, though. Well, Jack, if you want me to say Hopper, you can super chat, and then I'll read your super chat. Stand by. Hopper chat. <laughs> Stand by. Oh, geez. Uh, there's a question for you here, Jack, after you do a super chat, I think. Let me go to some other ones. Um, hey, Jack. Yep. This is for you. What's up? Do you record video on your R5 or just photos? I changed the dedicated video cameras for video from DSLR due to the overheating Sony A7 to FX30. That's from Steve Kajevic. This is a great Kalevic? This is a great question. Um, is that a good question? Yeah, it's a great question. So, we were just talking about the slow mo shots. Those were shot with an R5, uh, 4K 120 in Canon log, um, and uh, this is like this is almost secret sauce. It's not. It's not. Um, my procedure for successfully getting slow-mo off of a R5 that's been sitting out in the sun and baking for like 12 hours is to leave it in photo mode and then right before the static fire, when you hear me freaking out on stream about operating the camera, that is me switching it from photo mode into video mode only for the duration necessary to absolutely avoid overheating. Um, but yeah, I, I understand why Steve uh, did this. I think the R5 is a fantastic video camera. I do wish it had, oh, I don't know, this really revolutionary, brand new, never before seen on this planet technology called a fan. 
Um, but, <laughs> but Canon actually makes an R5C, which is an R5 cinema camera, and that has a fan, but it's also like two thousand dollars more. And, and then also you get into like weather sealing and water ingress and blah blah blah. So yes, the overheating is lame, but in practice, even when I'm shooting 4K a lot. Uh, I don't ever hit overheating unless I'm shooting 4K 120, and I'm basically limited by card space and desire to not have terabytes of data before I get to a point where it'll overheat from from 4K 120. Although it has happened, it's overheated. Oh yeah, I mean you remember it's overheated for oh, yeah. it's overheated for Virgin Galactic. It's overheated for Starship yeah, streams. Yeah, yeah. It's overheated for wow. yeah, it happens. But you you learn to manage basically. And I there are rumors of an R5 Mark II coming out, and you better believe uh, my wallet is already sad. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna keep speed running some. That's I think that was a great question, Jack. Thanks for for answering the details there. I was gonna make a Snyder remark about yes, and with all of this, you can get fantastic slow motion shots of the back of a United Reynolds lift. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Okay, okay. The other thing SpaceX. is the other thing is is I almost didn't set the shot because it looked so garbage because of that lift. But I told myself silly lift. I, I had I had you know the the better angel and the and the evil angel on your shoulder. The evil DOS on my shoulder was like, nah, it's a terrible shot. Don't even bother the the dos angel with the little halo and the harp on my shoulder was like ground truth we need to test these things so that when, a, when a launch comes we have practice and we know that it works and so i set the shot anyways even though it was largely garbo because of that stupid lift anyways that's okay anyways the the practice and the experience i've i've been harping on this and what did what did i say there we were in a meeting and i was like i don't know we should deploy the camera because it's tuesday like not because there's a special event happening or whatever but we we do need to spend more time practicing with our equipment because we're out there every single day like we're always at starbase doing stuff so anyways <laughs> let me say thanks to some more people here jack go no alex in the back channel says today we learned jack's voices of reason are two different <laughs> versions, two different of, versions DOS. of DOS. yeah i mean you know me alex <laughs> i don't i don't have a voice of reason I have a voice of chaos. <laughs> it's Adrian. It's Adrian. You're both of your names are yellow. Both of your names oh are gosh. yellow, and they start with A. And I'm a. I already established that I have a smooth brain. What more do you want from me? Oh no. Doing my best. All right. More super chats. More super chats. <laughs> um, we got that one. Yeah, I can't make that one to go away. But whatever. Gambler ninety three did a tip over at tips.nessaspacelight.com. Is it, is it bad that I say that every time? Like, I'm tips.nessaspacelight.com to tell you how they did this tip. Um, Gambler did a $100 tip. Where'd it go? Oh, somebody clicked it. There it went. It says, congrats on the 1 million subs. Also wanted to thank you guys for the years of amazing coverage. Watching your coverage of Falcon 9 launches in the Starship Pops in Boca was something that gave my mom lots of joy the last couple of years of her life. Will always be a fan and supporter. Gambler, Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for sharing it with your fa friends and family and loved ones, especially if that was a, a way that you got to spend very important quality time with your mom there. So thank you so much for making it so we can keep doing this. Always. And thanks for sharing it with, with your friends and family and loved ones. Always love hearing comments like that. It means the world. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it really is. It's like, y'all know we say it over and over again, but you don't have to do tips. You don't have to do super chats or be a member or anything like that. Like just being here and sharing these sorts of things and our wacky conversations. I know sometimes they're a little wacky. Wild and crazy these two guys, guys over here. Yeah, pointing at them. <laughs> um, hey, just thank y'all for being a part of it. Like everybody that shows up to these shows is part of the community. We don't. We can't say it enough. Um, just a few more. Bite Ford has one here. Two fifty dollars super chat. How? Well, Wait, doing this on my cell phone. How did, Wait, what? How did you pronounce their name? Bide Bide Ford. Hey, you said. Bite Ford. I was like, what? Bite Ford. Yeah, I think I might have said Bite Ford. We're, add, yeah. we're adding in syllables, but they're they're Bite Ford. They're great. They're great. So I mean, heck, <laughs> more syllables, more better. Bite Ford. How's that? Um, says, well, do this on my cell phone. It messed up my comment. So Reader's Digest version is congratulations to the best rocket and space channel ever. NSF. Three of my favorite hosts ever. Bite Ford. Bite Ford. Either way you like it. Thank you so much for the support and the kind words. Right. Yes. I appreciate Nobody it. Else is talking. No, I'm yeah, sorry. Okay. I'm yelling at people in chat about Hoppy. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and by people, I mean Jerwa. Hi, Jerwa. <laughs> Hey, going to speed run some here. Blake Alexander, Gift and Red Team memberships. Uh, let's do all the gifts. Wilbo Tiberius Baggins. <laughs> oh, no. I did this. Okay. It's my right. fault. 
No, no, keep um, going. Keep going. Keep hey, going. Hey, here's John. John Depker did a super chat. Says, cheers to y'all's five years and a million subs. I'll be here as long as y'all are in for the who is clicking them in for the long haul. There we go. I can find it when it moves. Thank you so much. We see John's name in there as well. And then this happened. Apparently. Uh, Musical Wolf said cake in the shape of Hopper in Win Hop Fund. Happy five year anniversary. Thanks. Where'd it go? There it is. Musical Wolves. And then we got Jack. <laughs> Don't do it. Got Jack. Don't do it. Who says Hopper. Jack just says Hopper. Hopper. That's what the chat says. The proper name. Hopper. Somebody clicked that one. Little green check mark next to it. And then, of course, Eric Spittle topped that $5 instead of $2 and said Hoppy. Hopper. Well, you didn't super chat again. You don't get to say that again. Stand, um, st- Eric Frazier also said Stand by. Hop. Oh, here we go. <laughs> It's like she's just giving you two money. Use tips.nasaspacelight.com instead, Jack. Okay, hang on. Stand by. <laughs> um, we got some more gift memberships here as well. Steve, I got that one in there, I think. Five red team memberships. Blake Alexander gifted some. Wilbo Tiberius Baggins gifted some. And then Jerwa, the voice of reason, trying to bring harmony in, in not discord, peace to the stream, says, let's compromise Star Hoppy. Jack, do you allow Star no. Hoppy? No, that's what I was yelling no. at, at Jerwa in Discord about. No. Still not a not, thing. Not acceptable. Okay. All right. We gotta get um, we gotta get Apple Pay on uh, on tips.nasaspaceflight.com. I would have already paid by now, but I have to type in my credit card info. Is that a thing we could do? Probably. I have to talk to the store people about that. Anyways. Um, where are we? Oh, John did another two dollars saying hopper with three exclamation points as well. That's the thing. Good man. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyways, where are we at? Josh, you've it's moved on to questions already. I hear that you've trying moved to. on to questions already, which means you want to continue. But there is a question that we ask every single time we talk about Starship. Does anybody know if the viewers can hear Kevin? Uh, can the viewers uh, yes. hear Kevin? It appears that they can. Chat, tell us if you can hear Kevin. I'm oh, like, they can, here, like hear can they hear him? Oh, they can. Does anybody know what this is? I do. I do because I'm pretty sure in the scram, scrum, whatever you want to call it, in the in the hustle to set up for a starship flight, somebody, maybe named maybe named Das, hit me up and was like, "Hey, can you put this this sign up in front of one of our cameras?" <laughs> and can you like, go. It started with, "Can you go to town and get this from the printer?" I think. Yes. And Mary was involved in there too. This was like an old, might I say, dare I say, failed merch design. <laughs> we did. Can anyone translate these hieroglyphics <laughs> that used to be available on a T-shirt? When orbit? Now there's more to it. When orbit what? Starship. Uh, yes, that's the last part of it. There. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all know where this is from? Does anybody know? Nobody's ever going to guess this because it's so terrible and esoteric. There is not a single person in chat that will know what I was thinking when I thought this was a good idea. Spoilers, oh. it wasn't a great idea. Yeah, yeah. No, I no, no, yeah, I have no idea. It's, anybody like I'm literally gonna sit on this for a second. Nope. Anybody? <laughs> I'm reading chat. This is me reading chat today. Uh no, these were not on the golden record on Voyager. <laughs> 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 that's amazing that's good i remember the sign also wasn't it, Pi- this is- was it pioneer or was it voyager oh geez i don't know golden guys. record wise guys uh, really? what do your really? thing whatever i'm still seeing if chat knows what this is from nobody knows what this is from i made ej mad it's not 2001 I'm sorry ej bro it's not it's the flight four patch somebody said it's the flight four patch now, maybe. I mean, that center one might be okay. Um, the the backstory on this wacky design, there's an episode of Stargate SG-1 where they get captured by an ancient fish person who's speaking Babylonian and makes Daniel Jackson translate a bunch of stuff. And I had just watched that episode. And so what was in the back of my mind was this fish person in Stargate SG-1 asking Daniel Jackson over and over again in broken English, what fate Amaroka? And that's the only thing they could say until they learn more English, right? 
And so I'm over here. I must have been taking a shower or something like that. And I'm like, oh, we should do it the, the secret symbol that says Wind Orbit Starship. Wind Orbit Starship. And I thought this was such a great idea. It wasn't a great idea. It was a bad idea, y'all. All I'm, all I'm hearing <laughs> is that this episode of Stargate was a second tier version of uh, Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. <laughs> it wasn't one of the better episodes. It was some like super low budget practical effects like smoke and dry ice bubbling in, in water and stuff like that. It's like well, it's like when I'm the, trying to see. when the X Files does like the creature of the week episode. It's like okay, fine, okay, I guess you got it. Does anybody even remember that episode? Like Adrian over here is like screaming, "Not that episode!" <laughs> oh, it's almost as bad as that episode with the furlings. Anyways, um, what are we supposed to be doing next? Kevin was Kevin reading us like into something here. We've talked about the four-week thing. Are we moving into another he wants to know like, when, topic of discussion? He wants to know when we think Starship's going to launch, because that's the question we always talk when, about when, when we talk orbit. about Starship. When Starship orbit. When orbit. That's, that's the question. End of May. Moving on. Now, wait a second. Now, wait, 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 wait a second. Now, orbit? Um, orbit. End of May? Yeah. Orbit. Orbit. Because... Orbit. Jack, you're getting interesting ten lines again. Um... <laughs> Windows. You look like Jordy um, LaForge. He looks awesome. like Jordy LaForge. No. If, awesome. oh, if only I had that much riz. The 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 flight three didn't do the engine relight, proving that they could bring the starship down within the deorbit zone. Right? It was out of control. Maybe they couldn't get propellant to the engines. By these powers combined, they did not do the engine relight. So before Starship is able to go into an orbit, like an actual orbit, do they have to demonstrate mastery of that relight? Here comes Jack. Um, do they have to demonstrate mastery of that engine relight and deorbit into a known target area after an intentional trajectory change before they're allowed to burn all the way to put Starship in an orbit. So, is the next hmm. launch going to be going into orbit or not? Jack says not. EJ, what do you think? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think it's the next one's going to go into orbit. Now, keep in mind that trajectory that has Starship come down over the Indian Ocean. That's like ninety nine percent of the way there. Uh, yep. That's like maybe the difference between firing the engines for like an extra five seconds. Um. Now, with that being said, I'm not sure if it's so much like iteration, you know, like, oh, you know, they got to make sure that it can deorbit before it comes down. The, the insertion orbit for Starship, at least, I, I think the apogee on IFT3 was like 235 kilometers. That's even if you're circular at 235, that's that's a huge decaying orbit. Uh, that's that's not staying up there for very long, no matter what, unless yeah. you have some type of propulsion. Right. Uh yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not necessarily sure that's a requisite, to be honest. Okay. Um, I yeah. I I think this trajectory is more. Uh, the the reason why they they've chosen this trajectory is that it's just coming down, not flying over uh, more populated areas. The trajectory that fl you know would belly flop out near Hawaii in the Pacific yeah. testing range that flies over Indonesia. It flies over the Philippines. It, those are populated areas, and if Starship breaks up during reentry, you don't you really don't want that coming down over a populated area. And yeah. also uncontrolled, yeah. South China Sea is a huge shipping lane. You you don't want to go and break a container ship. Yeah, drop a starship on a container ship. Yeah, I, I not do not think I do not think that they will fire the engines to put Starship into anything beyond a suborbital ballistic trajectory until they determine what caused the loss of control and prove that they're able to relight those engines in space after they're there so that they can bring Starship down in a controlled thing. Because even it's a small difference, right? It's a small difference between where they were going and what an orbit would have been, right? But yeah. you cannot, absolutely cannot get Starship in orbit where it's going more than one time around the earth and have it be tumbling out of control the way that it was yeah, with no yeah. ability to regain that control. So we need to see why mm -hmm. it tumbled specifically, like somebody explain to us what the findings are, why that thing tumbled and then prove that they can keep it from tumbling next time and relight the engine so that they can control the, the descent exactly into a place where you're not going to crash on somebody's house or a container ship. I think were the two things you put up. Dude, I think another poignant thought here, and you, you guys, for, for, you know, if I'm if I'm pulling this out of my tail, you, you let me know. Uh, I, das, I, you know, I think you might be onto something there. 
And I also think that even if Starship's attitude was correct during that re-entry uh, for IFT3, I don't think much is making it through that re-entry, even with the thermal protection system. Um, I, I, I kind of want to point out that, that the trajectory that IFT3 took was an insanely steep re-entry trajectory. I, yep. I don't think much could get through on that trajectory. You know, like even if Starship was flying perfectly and they had perfect attitude control, I still think that it, it probably, you know, probably wouldn't have made it. Even huh. Elon, Elon said for flight four, they're just aiming to get past peak heating. Because yep. that re-entry trajectory for anything that you want to come back is very, very, very steep. Uh, so a re what are they doing yeah. there, though? Like, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, they're not setting themselves up for failure, right? But no. are they, like, testing the extents? Like, if we can get through this crazy aggressive trajectory, then we're cool in less aggressive, more normal trajectories. Do you think that's what they're doing? It would be a good way to stress test that system. If you can make it through on that, you know, that trajectory, it'll definitely survive something else. I mean, it's also, it's also possible that they, you know, they want to really... I mean, what's your like, OK, Starship's supposed to come back from high orbits. It's supposed to, you know, uh, come back from Mars. So a trans Earth injection trajectory from from Mars is you're going to see some pretty high temperatures there. You're going to hit the atmosphere really, really fast. Yeah. and It's going to generate a lot of heat, even on a even on a shallow trajectory. So uh, my guess is that they're they're figuring out what the duty cycle is on those tiles, like it, how much you can take before it'll really it'll really like break. I mean, it's good data to have, but also I think you might be onto something, you know, they want to be absolutely sure that no matter what happens, if this thing breaks up, that it's going to not, no one's ever going to find any pieces of it. That'll be it from breaking up during re-entry or coming down in an unpopulated area. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good point. I think, I think you, you might be onto something. I miss Jack, by the way, like, where's Jack? It's like me and EJ hanging out. I miss Jack. Um, <laughs> of max heating that they would reach on a more benign trajectory sooner so that when they do lose the ship, they still have the data that they would have gotten from a more benign. Does that make sense? Like, is Jack muted right now? Am I muted? Is everything fine? I heard Jack, but some people in chat were saying muted. One, two, three, four. I think we're good. right. One, two, three, yeah, four. We're good. Just keep going. Yeah, you're fine. No, Jack. Sorry. Apparently I'm breathing into my mic. So maybe Kevin is zealously muting me because nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> you are you know, quite this a heavy lumber. breather. You like bring it over here off the side instead of putting it all the way in front like that. Like I'm, I was muted for a second. I'm jazzed up typing. today. I'm I'm all jazzed and breathing heavy. I'm jazzed sorry. Jazzed up. Nice. There you go. It's a jazz There's hands. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> you. Now you do. Thank you. Yeah. No. No. Not when you need it, though. Yeah. Well. Story not of, when you need it. Story of my. Is that your monkey? He's not your dancing <laughs> monkey. <laughs> Um, right, man. <laughs> you know something? One more comment on the trajectory, because I, I know we, we have more things to talk about. Um, the steeper trajectory, and I'm not an orbitologist either, or a reentryologist or anything like that. <laughs> you said But you I were. wonder. <laughs> what? I, that's, it doesn't say that in the description, does it? Oh, somebody's going to go out of the description. Um, I wonder if the more aggressive trajectory also decreases the uncertainty ellipse of where you may come down. Like, if you're coming in really shallow, you have more time that you're acting, and I, I wonder if that makes it a wider area where you might come down, and if you come in a little bit more steep, then that sort of narrows the, the size of the potential areas that you might come down in because you're coming absolutely. in like, through the atmosphere different, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, yeah, yeah you're coming in on a steeper trajectory, you're going to be more precise. There's a, there's a reason... Um, we'll call them canned heat kinetic energy experiments. Yep. Or something. There's a reason why they fly on steep trajectories. Yeah, makes sense. Um, what was precise. that tweet? I was supposed to read a tweet that came up, and I didn't read the tweet. What was that tweet again? Here we go. Here's a zoom into low orbits. A recent flight of interest is plotted with a cross to be considered orbital. You for sure need to be above the red line, really above the green line, and it would be nice to be at the blue line. So, is there a graphic that goes with this? Okay. Look at this graph. Stop. Sorry. Nice. Stop it. Oh, Sorry. no. No. So showing no. that ship 28 was uh, for the apogee that it reached. So 20, what are the units there? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Those are 20, so like 235-ish, right? Um, you have to be for sure above the red line. 
should be above the green line and hopefully above the blue line, which would be a circular orbit. And ship 28 wasn't near any of those things. I'm not sure how this ties into the conversation we were having, but graphs. Let, okay. me, let, me, let me take We were looks. talking about yeah. whether or not they're going to orbit on Flight 4. Flight 4 is doing yeah, the same yeah. trajectory as Flight 3. Ship 28 is not above the red line. So I think if we're treating uh, Mr. McDowell as the orbit police that, that he truly is, then uh, we can objectively say not orbit. Although eh, that X is relatively close to the red line. I mean, it's not above it, but it's close. Well, but that's a, so, that's a zero perigee. That's like perigee that intersects the surface of the Earth at datum altitude, like at sea level, right? Got it. So perigee, perigee equal, to, equal or below zero, if it goes into the negative, that's a suborbital trajectory. That's, that's basically what this says. Those, yeah. those lines are the marks where the periapsis would be zero. So about the high, like when you're, that's, basically the closest you can get to orbiting without orbiting unless you're at escape velocity right yeah yeah and then the 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 middle line is 60 kilometer perigee and then the blue would be circular so that would be peri equals apo so perigee equals apogee meaning zero eccentricity yep perfect circular orbit eccentricity i like not, it yeah yeah well i mean yeah, there you go <laughs> that's uh it's orbital mechanics man <laughs> Learned it from learned it from Jonathan McDowell. He's the orbital police. Don't he is research. the orbital police. Oh crap! Oh crap! So, crap! The orbital police is here. Be cool. Be cool. Everybody, be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Here oh, come no. the space cops. Here come the space cops. <laughs> Um, long story short, I think we all agree that Ship 28 didn't go into orbit, but it's not very far. That was a YouTube comment that I dealt with. Um, I say dealt with. like I, I respond to comments a lot of the times, and I'll put my little name after it, slash DOS or whatever. Um, but somebody was like, it's so embarrassing that you're so excited that it did this and it didn't even make orbit. And I was like, here's why this is exciting. Here's why it's okay for us to be excited about this. The difference between that and orbit is like this much. It's not very much. And the reason it didn't go orbital, I'm positive they could have put Starship into orbit on the last launch. Yeah, absolutely. The thing is, it wouldn't have been safe to do so because they hadn't demonstrated they could maintain control of Starship once it was in orbit. Because the absolute thing that you cannot do is have a Starship that's out of control in a low, rapidly decaying orbit, and it becomes deorbit roulette. Who knows where it's going to come down? Right? Um, yeah. That's the thing you can't do. There are other boosters that have done that with core stages in the past. And it, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's never ended badly, but it's almost ended badly. Yet. It could one day. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, that's why we were so excited about that. Because it's so close. Like, they could have put that ship into orbit this time. And they did not because they need to demonstrate that they can safely control the ship. Like, retain control of the ship. So, my, anyways, my question, will the next flight... My question oh, yeah. there is, does one in space burn... So that's successful. Does that mean that they can? Oh, we lost us. No, I was splitting my water. <laughs> <laughs> I have these little magnetic molecules that I play with when I'm sitting at my desk, and I. Nice. What, I mole the what molecule is that? It's water. EJ. It's an H2O. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. EJ. All right. Uh, GB. That's methane. What did you say? I don't know. Uh, that's methane. Yes, it's methane. It's a carbon and four. CH4, man. CH4. Do yeah, you have anything absolutely. else over here? Hang on. <laughs> All right. I made this one up. I don't think that's real. That's, um, <laughs> yeah, that that's not a thing. C2H4 with a double bond in between. Yeah, <laughs> that, I don't think like that, I don't think chemistry does, like I don't that. think chemists like that. You better not show people that. They might get <laughs> mad. They're like, oh, it's fine. Um, where are we at? EJ, you got an out, I know. Uh, have we talked about a lot of stuff? Just really quick. We're talking about Starship. Yeah. Well, to, to finish I off mean, my thought before we went down the water. Oh, yeah. The, sorry, Jack. Sorry, sorry. Train, <laughs> is one in-space burn of Raptor enough to then move on to actually orbiting the ship? Or will they want to fly that profile multiple times and demonstrate repeatedly that they can fire a raptor in space and safely deorbit the ship that is a question i have i suspect in classic spacex fashion oh i just cut myself on a on a usb a to what? i just cut myself on a usb a to c adapter which is what i have as a fidget toy it's not anywhere near as nice as yours ow wheels are falling off the wagon here. Uh, you okay? no, I'm, again? I'm bleeding out but i'm fine anyways <laughs> so no Did you like, touch it again? <laughs> on the on the wall that has the snacks on it there are two shelves one has the batteries and tools and right next to the batteries Ooh. and tools there's a first aid kit if you need one thank you your super chats go to first aid kits at the house as well folks this is when das comes through town he buys first Actually, aid kits and he puts them in the truck and he puts it at the house and he puts them all over the place so jack has a bandage when he needs one Chad is saying that second one is ethylene. Yeah, I mean, is I'm, not, really? I'm not I mean, that good at chemistry, guys, but yeah. My, my wife is probably screaming at me right now because she knows yeah. if that's a valid molecule or not. Yeah. 
Do you see? Show, cool. chat the, show chat the Walmart. Yeah, there you go. The Equate. For, we don't spend extra money. The Equate first aid kit. Not sponsored by Equate or Walmart, by the way, unless. Um, it was literally in the shot over his shoulder so he would have a Band-Aid for it. Now, we don't have to live stream Jack putting a Band-Aid on his finger. I mean, so, actually, I mean, we, we do. We could some chemistry here. So Chad is saying the ethylene is C2H4. Ethylene is C2H4 with double bond. Oh, carbon. It stings. It, ethane is C2H6. So it means it's working. So Kevin, that's stable, huh? It's stable. Like I mean, dude. Like, once again, I know that the angle, the angle of those molecules, absolutely makes a, a difference. And then there's, I don't know if chirality is. The uh, magnets fit in this. It, it, the know, angles of the magnets this, fit, but, yeah, so cool. it leads me to believe that it's valid. There you go. Know. If it fits, it's a molecule. There you go. Then again, I can do nonsense like this. Like, what is this? Oh, 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 oh. Dude, those are cool. I kind of want that. I know. I, I actually really think this is cool. I'm supposed to do a video with him. This is can we, weird, too. Can we do a collab with uh, Explosions and Fire, please? Pretty please? Pretty, pretty please. <laughs> with, with the magnetic molecules. Explosions and fire. Uh, uh, I forgot. I forgot the guy's name. I'm a terrible person. If you're watching, we. I love your channel. Your channel's amazing. We should do a collab. There's an entire thing where I'm supposed to demonstrate why, uh, like, fuel-rich or lean exhaust looks different based on these molecules and how the hydrogens yeah. get recombined, and you got extra carbons left over because you didn't have enough oxygen to actually. You know, there's a whole yeah. video I'm supposed to do on that one day. I oh, recorded man. it, but I hated it, and so I'm not. Release well, yeah, Welcome to cool. my that, life. Except then we released the cool, video. <laughs> we released the video when it's jacked. <laughs> that's super. That's super cool. Yeah, because that methane, that carbon, is what you know. You guys know, like from SLS, dealing with hydrogen is such a pain in the butt, right? You know that's why SpaceX went to chose methane because you still get all the benefits of the hydrogen, right? But you that carbon is keeping it nice and stable, so it's not as much of a pain in the butt to use. That's you know, super, that's super. I think that's super cool. It's super interesting to me. You know, in The Simpsons, when they cut to like inside Homer's head, and it's just the symbol banging monkey. Like that's symbol banging monkey. That's all I've got right now. I've got I've got literally nothing to contribute here. I'm so, okay. sorry. We're we're on also that, on no, the I clock think, here. Um, <laughs> we should probably talk about how those molecules uh, go through pipelines. Pipelines. Let's see what you're what talking. Ah. Ah, it's a Delta Four thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was, dude, that's why I hope somebody would pick up on it. Thank you, Kevin. That's where I was kind of going with that, man. In, in other news, I was just going to say, in other news, Delta Four scrubbed. We'll see you Monday. <laughs> and then we just go on to the rest of the news. Oh, no. Um, anyway. This this was a thing. Yeah, who oh, no. <laughs> Um, Y'all might have been watching the stream. We were, of course, streaming this. Uh, Delta IV, the final Delta IV that will fly, was all raring to go on Thursday. And it got us all the way down to T minus four minutes. I guess technically T minus three minutes and 58 seconds is where they called that red line. And uh, something hit the red line, meaning something exceeded the limits. And uh, they had to scrub the launch. Subsequently, we didn't know this at the time. But uh, they had to do a little bit of a hold because of winds. Weather was a big challenge that day. And they were holding that for a little bit. And then while they were holding for winds, the winds cleared up. And then there was a problem with a consumable pipeline that was supposed to be carrying consumables. I think it was liquid nit wouldn't it? LN2, it was, I think, right, y'all? nitrogen, yeah. Yeah, LN2 to the pad. Um, it was a little confusing for a second because it was like, oh, no, is it a valve? Jeez, I thought only hydrogen had problems. But apparently nitrogen has problems, too. Um, I, I, I it seemed like it was something with the pad GSE and then ULA did a correction and the correction was made it sound more like it was a pipeline, not at the pad that was providing the pad with the, with the consumable with the liquid nitrogen. Um, so anyways, yeah, here we go. Is this the one that says uh, more time? This was the second tweet. It's the tweet right before this. I don't know if we can get the tweet right before this, but they said that there was a problem with the pipeline that was supplying the vehicle, but the way they worded it made it sound like it was the pipeline away from the pad, like not right at the pad, not like a tube going up to the rocket itself. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, there's the troubleshoot, the pipeline, but the other thing said pipeline too. Anyways, anybody have thoughts on this Delta Four scrubbing? I was going to go to Florida for Delta Four. I got too stressed out with the impending eclipse uh, i was like you know what i'm gonna i'll stay in texas i'll focus on preparing for the eclipse um i really didn't want to miss the last delta i told myself forever ago that i was not going to miss the last delta but part of what factored into my decision to miss the last delta is that it's 
Delta. And things like this happen, Delta. and I don't have time to sit around in Florida waiting for Delta to go. Um, but it's just it's just the nature of this extremely complex system and Hydrolox and not launching a rocket uh, very often from the pad. So then you run into issues, you know, yeah, that you, you might issues. otherwise have worked out if you use the pad every week or what have you. So just the way that it goes. But Delta's still good. It orange. It was it, it was windy too. Like the cameras were shaking, and we were trying to do what mm -hmm. we could, but it was really windy out there so anyways what I, they haven't officially said another date but i think the next window is monday but they haven't confirmed whether or not they're going for it monday is the current status last i checked is that correct pretty sure that's correct yeah that yeah anyways. that's right yeah that's the last yeah. thing i've seen I mean, anyways it delta guys anybody that's a delta four fan or just like likes watching a lot of rocket launches you've seen a lot of delta launches launches delta is very stubborn with its ground service equipment as jack was saying you know it's supposed to launch a lot, but Delta ends up ends up having like a really like um, slow flight rate. Now, yeah. it, it's, it's a it, I think, slow flight rate to put it mildly. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but see, the interesting thing is, is that you 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 know the pad, the pad's sitting out there all day. It's sitting out there for a long time. Maybe gets one launch a year, right? And you know, that's not a lot. I mean, let, I'd like to remind everybody that before Falcon 9 came along, that one launch a year, oh, we're good, man. We got a launch this year. That's great. Now it's, oh, we got a launch today. I just want to point out the duality of that. That's pretty cool. But, I mean, part of the reason why Delta Delta is no, kind of notorious for scrubbing is because that equipment that was used, that and like all the GSE, Delta itself, the decision to use Hydrolox, if you have a high flight rate, it all makes sense. Yeah. It's like... um. Some things don't make sense to reuse in the space program, right, on, on vehicles, right? But if you think about it, it actually does. Like the fairings with SpaceX, for instance. Are fairings particularly expensive? No. That's an that's a inconsequential cost compared to, like, the first stage, right? But, like, SpaceX reuses their fairings because of the high flight rate. It's not that fairings are expensive to make comparatively, right? It's yeah. because they take time to manufacture. They're a bottleneck there, Right. So, I mean, the shuttle SRBs, you, same way. The SRBs are refurbishable. You, you don't reuse those. But if the shuttle was going to fly a lot, it makes a lot of sense. The reason why Delta's pad has had all these problems over the years is because it's the, these, systems, these things are designed to work. They were designed to launch something every, not every week, maybe like every month. And when you have something that's designed to, to move around a lot or any mechanical system and you let it sit, that's extraordinarily bad for it. Uh, you know, I'll... Okay, here comes the cars thing with EJ. Yeah, I know. Didn't see that one coming, right? <laughs> the, the, the worst thing that you can do to a vehicle is have it sit, uh, aside from, like, crashing it. Like, yeah, I'll the, buy that. The worst thing that you can do is just have it sit there. That's terrible Why is for it. It, it, right? it, it really comes down, I think, um, to if you're launching so often, your rocket may be damaging your infrastructure, and your infrastructure becomes the limiting factor. And if you're not launching enough, then weather and time and the salt mm -hmm. spray from the Atlantic Ocean ends up damaging your infrastructure, and infrastructure becomes your limiting factor, right? Like, there's a yep. balance somewhere in the middle of that. And I bet you dollars to donuts that the thing that's the initial limiting factor for the starship flight rate is going to be repairs and reconditioning needed for the pad infrastructure you could have a line of boosters but if they're damaging the pads yep. that becomes a problem we've seen all the work they have to do and then we get two pads and oh, all this other stuff but i i have a feeling that rapidly reusable launch pads may be as difficult as rapidly reusable rockets yeah, for different engineering problems right i I will, you know what? Some people are going to call me nuts for this, dude. I, I think that the pads, especially in the case of Starship, are sometimes just as complicated, if not more complicated, than the vehicles that they launch. Yep. I personally am a huge GSE fan. I like yep. the machine that launches the machine. Like, if you just think about, you know, we talked about this earlier with that pipe, that flexi pipe on the OLM. Think about the amount of the amount of propellant that SpaceX is moving in 45, 50 minutes. Yep. yep. That is, I mean, if you use that equipment to somehow like drain an Olympic swimming pool, you would be able to see the water like go down. You'd be, you wouldn't need like a time lapse. It would just be like, 
Yeah, that would that would know. be cool. Like a, like here's a regular right. swimming pool and how fast it would drain. Like uh, exactly. Ryan, can we get on that for the next Starship launch? Whoosh, yeah, Ryan, make it happen, Captain. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Swimming pools per second. Nice. No, it's, I mean, it's a good idea. It it really is a good idea. Um, we do need to move on though. EJ, mm -hmm. I know you've got an out. We're like 16 minutes away from your out here, and we still yep. have lots of stuff to talk about. Um, a ton more people said thanks here with more information coming through in Super Chats and stuff. Let me say thanks to Steve Kalavik. Kayavik, I don't know which one I said correctly there. Um, but thank you so much for the support. We've got Starhopper literally just said Starhopper. That was That's me. What they said. That was me. Oh, that was you. Okay. You just made an account it's called Starhopper. Nice. Yeah. Um, via tips that has space light. Yes, that's what you said to do. Um, you literally told me to true. do it, and I did. I it. did. That is what I true. That is what I what I said to do. Uh, Eric Spittle, thank you for the support as well. Said still hobby. Julian Richards upgraded to Capcom. Parker Emery, oh, Obi Win can orbit. <laughs> I'll allow oh, no. it. I read it. There you go. There's your time in the sun. Um, Steve again came through again. Steve with multiple supports this stream uh, says, as a photographer, videographer, can I buy access to a good location for a future IFT launch? Steve, we've got some very interesting ideas, especially around some of the membership levels that we have uh, that we may start working on in future launches. Nothing to announce yet, but if you are a Starship Man who is very interested in seeing Starship launches. Those upper membership levels are places you should hang out for some amount of time because in the future we may be able to support something for folks that are there and longtime supporters. Nothing to announce yet, though. Uh, let's see here. And then John came through as well. Here's a bit from Victoria. She's heading to bed. That was 18 minutes ago. I hope we didn't miss Victoria. Um, but it's bedtime for Victoria. I wanted to say good night to you all. Good night, Victoria. I hope she didn't hear me say the thing about Santa Claus. It was, don't even say it again, dude. Seriously. <laughs> Jackson. Why are you lying? Why are you lying to these people? You don't What's wrong with like you? when you're dealing with kids. If you make a like, if you say that, you don't draw attention to it again. You just move on. You're like everybody want ice cream. I want ice cream, right? <laughs> so. Yay, ice cream, Happy Meals. <laughs> uh, let's move on to Give me our, some of those last, nuggies. our last some of those topic. Nuggies. Oh, yeah, by the way, Slim is back um, too. That's a thing. Yay, Slim. <laughs> so watch, watch this week in space flight if you want everybody's favorite earring wearing presenter to do some introductions for slim and explanation of what's going on there uh let's talk about the other thing that's happening here near and dear to our hearts it's five years since nsf nasa space flight started the youtube channel here on youtube as opposed to starting a youtube channel on instagram or something i guess um it's been five years since we've been here uploading videos and uh Along with that, we also hit a milestone. One million folks who have somehow accidentally clicked on the button that subscribes them to the channel. I'm not sure how y'all keep messing that up, but people keep clicking the subscribe button. And we have, is EJ singing? No. What were you doing? Uh, I thought it was having uh, one million. Uh, one, one million. million. Okay, I got you now. Dude, I've had that teed up for like two hours, man. <laughs> How many subscribers, EJ? One million. million. Okay. Yeah. Sir, a million is not actually that much. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think we have our special guest here. I think we might even have, if not a live video feed, a very accurate representation of our special guest. Uh, Chris, do we have you on the stream? <laughs> I'm just going to horse picture of her. Oh, my God. By the way, that's a very nice horse. So, uh, it is a nice yeah, horse. Look nice at that horse. mane. Quality, horse. Yeah. Quality yeah. horse, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. I, I was too busy laughing at the special guest bit, but um, Dan just saw a picture of a horse. Oh, dear. Well, you don't want to see me at 1 o'clock in the morning. That's just not going to be a pretty sight so either way <laughs> but yeah it's uh, hey, a big anniversary i'm trying to think of what i can say past what we were saying in hey, Della four heavy stream because hey, hey chris yeah yes AJ. Uh -oh. hello why the long face <laughs> oh my gosh you're, you're welcome channeling sawyer there aren't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's not here i had i had to represent <laughs> i i love the fact we're on this view right now i do believe that's one of the early mary clips that i may have bandicammed into that youtube channel in the early days I think it's the, is it the first video? I, Somebody correct me in the back channel. Be. I think this is the first video. It could be. It's definitely, it was quite impressive. People forget. If you go back onto the very early videos, you'll see the Hopper tests. People forget Hopper was actually spouting fire through the <laughs> yeah. vents during his like, hop test. Because remember, the 150 meter hop was not the first hop. She actually hopped. I don't know called a she. Uh, actually hopped slightly, like, I think 30 meters, was it? 
to start with. Jack, can you remember? Yep. First hop was like two inches. Second hop was... It was like a little... Second hop was 20 meters. Last hop was 150. Hmm. There we go. So that's kind of memory lane of where they've come from. It doesn't um, seem that long ago, does it? It does not seem that long. We know how it long ago it was now because of the, the anniversary, but it feels like the progression from Starhopper to this massive, super heavy booster with a ship on top that is now working quite well. Uh, yep. I can say that now. We, 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 they're looking to get the re-entry part right on IFT4. I think that's a massive achievement. It's a great progression curve for where we may be in five years' time. No kidding. Um, like five, that was it five years ago. This is where are we going to be five years in the future? I don't know what this video is. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what, boy, that's a nice truck. Yeah, yeah. that's KSC. That's at the Cape. Um, I oh, there's a launch happening behind it. That's right. It's one of our <laughs> KSC guys. He said they were basically working on another pod, and they were just parking up. It's a regular thing. It's an Atlas V launch. Remember that? And that is literally from the closest you can be. They were just parking up and watching the launch. It's one of the is that an L2 leak it's sort of thing? It's an L2 like, leak, yeah. What, in, the early days, L2 in the early days of the channel, I was thinking, what can we put on part, you know, past just Mary's clips? And so I took a few videos from L2 and just put them on there. Just like, almost like what shorts are today. I probably invented shorts. <laughs> well, you invented yeah. shorts. <laughs> I'm sorry or thank you. I'm not sure which one to say. Um, Kevin, do any of those videos, those early videos have thumbnails? Because we have to talk about the genesis of it's thumbnails. Unrivaled, unrivaled thumbnail gang from Chris Bergenator. Uh, also, I'm posting in, in the back channel. Oh, no, that's not the right link. Don't look at that. I have a, oh, I have a video of the fireball, the star hopper I'm fireball, it. that it was belching oh, fire. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so, so stand by for that, too. <laughs> um, Chris, didn't you used to, like, not only did, because the story, like, why we started uploading videos to YouTube is that we would upload, Mary and folks would upload videos to the forums, but the way it was set up, that would take forum storage space and bandwidth. Yep. Right? right. So I'll, I'll tell and then you pay through the nose for that. Oh, big time. I'll tell the story again. Right. So where we were is the site was a new site with the forum as well. The forum is a PHP forum, which means everything's attached. It's not like Reddit is, where it's hyperlinked to like um, an external image or hosting site or anything like that. Yep. We host everything. The database is massive. So Mary was uploading a clip. She Mary turns up on the forum. I mean, I live in Boca Chica Village, and um, I'm I'm taking these photographs and videos of the early days of Starbase before it was even called Starbase. It wasn't even called that, yeah. yeah. So we're all woohoo, wonderful, and that basically got word of mouth out there to the point that people were hot linking the attachment links in the forum to other sites and um, basically oh. it was feeding off our servers into the yeah. sites and said mary this is killing us because oh. i could see the bandwidth going up and up and up and up and that rises the cost of the server cost and it was not going to be a, 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 a something we could keep up with so I said to Mary, I said, can we put them on YouTube? Can we just take the clips and put them on YouTube? Um, that way we can then post the YouTube link in the forum threads that you post in. And they so we're not post... paying for the exactly, data yeah. anymore, paying for the bandwidth. And Mary said yes. And then we went and progressed past that point where Mary had several clips and would, she would write out on the list the running order of the clips. And I would play them in VLC and I'd record them on Bandicam, pausing between clips, and if the, the audio needed a scratch audio over it, I would play a scratch audio in Windows Media Player, so could, yep. Bandicam records any sound on your PC, so that worked. Unfortunately, when the videos got longer, and things like email pings were going off, whatever, have to, I'd have to start again from scratch. So it could take several hours just to record like five <laughs> or six clips together, and then put yep. them on YouTube, but... Uh, I did the thumbnails in MS Paint, the XP version. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cause, yeah, because the, 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 the new version is rubbish. The XP version, which you can still download for Windows 10 and 11 Great. and what have you, um, is far superior. So my, I, I was quite proud of thumbnails. My thumbnails told the story. I would take nice. four screenshots from the clips of Mary and put them into like a four box and make that a thumbnail and then use Bandicam's... Uh, text editor across it and put the actual title of the video in there. Uh, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's the original thumbs. Something like... something we should mention too is, uh, so, you know, water towers can fly, right? That was from Starhopper's flight, was from Tim yelling that. Uh, that was, we, we were both on top of Andy, aka Andy's roof. Nomad's roof. Nomad. Nomad on the NSF forums. I think he bought that place because he wanted to see SpaceX 
development and be right there. I, I could be mistaken. He might have already owned it. But either way, uh, Nomad lived next to Mary. That's how Mary found out, I believe, about NSF. So it's it's just funny how the universe works out sometimes. Um, it, it's 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 pretty nifty. The montage thumbnail. There's one. Yep. The SpaceX with a little picture in yeah, picture, yeah. like yes. there's multiple. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, this, you. so this Come went on, on for a period of time, and then we were like, "Okay, hang on a second. <laughs> These are getting a lot of views. Like, we need let's let's do some some. Chris, your thumbnails are great. We love your thumbnails. Uh, <laughs> best, you, yes. best thumbnail game in the business. But uh, but yeah, when when I started editing the dailies, and then when Brady started doing the thumbnails, uh, I think it was like just pouring gas on the fire even more because the content from Mary was just <laughs> insane. And uh, and yeah, it's just been a steady progression since, right? Yep. It, it's actually it, quite crazy because it was never uh, intended to be a channel that would gain subscribers and views and whatever it was literally just to protect the site that was yep. the, the we never went into this thinking let's start a youtube channel let's try and make a big success out of it it was never that that's the funny thing that the success has happened because it got its own momentum and then we got to the stage where we're thinking this is taking off quite a bit here. we're going to do things more properly <laughs> Like some of these, uh, some of these thumbnails that are that are coming across here. There's like a couple, like oh that one, wow, somebody put a drop shadow behind that text. Um, <laughs> can you imagine whether or not these thumbnails would fly on YouTube today? But this, this is literally what we were doing. Look, that one has some text on it. Um, uploading the videos, and it wasn't like oh we're going to become a successful YouTube channel or anything like that. It's like oh my god, we want to stop paying for bandwidth. Where can we put videos that we don't have to pay for bandwidth? And that's how these videos got here, right, Chris? Yeah, it's literally that. And I, I like watching this scrolling past these old videos because you can see how we tried to widen it out. It was very important we didn't have the channel just be Starship or SpaceX yep. because they are the big big name in town. Let's face it, but it is. The site itself covers all rockets, so we had to find ways of making sure we showed other rockets in the channel as yep. well. And that's where I was taking stuff out of L2 and what have you, because that was our original content to use. And that was the way around it, rather than just sort of like the game a lot of channels play, where they just basically just take the official recording and just put it on their channel. Just put it on their yeah, own channel, yeah. yeah. I wanted to keep that unique, like the site was. So that was kind of a nice little foundation to make sure that we were always looking at original content going forward. Oh yep. my gosh! Oh, oh God! Wait, wait, SN3 stop. failure? What? No, no, what? The, the salvaging starships SN3 thrust section. You know what? <laughs> what I wouldn't give to see a nice clear shot of a thrust section these days, or a nice clear shot of a dome flip. Like, there's so many things <laughs> with with uh, the Star Factory and with the you know the growth of the facility into a fully fledged rocket factory that we just don't see a lot of things anymore i mean even just raptors like it's really hard to get a lens if at all on a raptor engine uh prior to it being installed on a vehicle and it's just these these videos are a really a, a trip down memory lane i'll say something else by the way while i'm here is that the success of the videos is not the fact that they were original content. It's the fact that Mary would be out there all day. I remember Mary being waiting for a Raptor to arrive. Literally yep. hours and hours and hours staking out for the Raptor to arrive. Not many people could do that. Nope. And that's where you'd get the shots. And that's the important thing. People will people won't care to do, unfortunately. But people really don't care about thumbnails. Apart from the people who have made to click on them because the thumbnail looks great but the content is everything you could have the best yeah. thumbnail in the world and a terrible video and people will eventually turn off so the content is everything so all praise again to mary and that's why mary's getting the gold plaque it was never even a, a whom what should we do with the girl plaque it was even before like we're 800 000, if we ever get to a million mary's getting a plaque it was yep. just so obvious on so many levels that mary's going to get it yeah, the sheer perseverance yep. from her to stake things out. And I mean, they were, we call them daily videos still. We put out like two a week, three a week sometimes of the daily style videos. We still call them daily. Uh, yeah, they're daily style. Yeah. If you're new to the channel or, you know, you weren't around back then, for like, I want to say three years, we'd put out a video every single 
day. And so the, Every day. the amount of dedication on Mary's part to gather footage, you know, it's a rainy day. There, it's, it's, a, it's a Sunday. There's nobody working. Like, how do you squeeze that sponge and find something interesting to, to, to exhibit? And then, I mean, I, I really, I, I don't want to, uh, to be like, oh, I'm so great. But like, Mary was out there all day shooting, and then I would be yep. up all night editing, and then I would get the video done just before, you know, 10 a.m. Eastern, and then it would go live, and then the process would start again. And that was, like, years of my life. <laughs> this is this is the story of the Orange Banners. Like, we finally got into Orange Banner territory yes. here. And, it, like, when we started to make these thumbnails that weren't just, like, picture in picture pasted over each other, we put, and we, I say we, Jack put these these thumbnails together and like didn't you just choose it because so you like orange the, th the thumbnails i think were brady but these the choice yeah. of orange specifically what i will take credit for that because yes I, I like orange <laughs> that's the reason the intro says it's orange i like orange it's the best color i mean it's just like orange watch band what do you do orange shoe like come on orange it's good <laughs> <laughs> it's like what do you what do you do on the thumbnails like oh, oh we should dress up we should put a little bit more effort into the thumbnails and we start editing these thumbnails and the first thumbnails that we edit in this manner have this orange banner it's like always been an nsf thing because jack likes orange jack chose a color brady made a thumbnail and you scroll back through the history of the channel and we've always had these orange banners you still see orange banners like to this day yep. um we have videos that we put out and there will be an orange accent or an orange highlight all the starbase sort of stuff throws back to that original orange yeah. and to, it's and orange just really quickly to be fair it's not just because i like orange i mean i do but it's also it's a very specific orange it's ff4 f international orange that's the hex code it's international orange which is used in test flights and it's a test program <laughs> so it just works ej do we have to say goodbye to you? EJ's, EJ's about like, <laughs> wait, what is going on over here? <laughs> also, that's the color for parking cones. Yes. It's the color for parking cones. Not at SpaceX. Those are all white. That's, uh, that's also yeah, true. It's weird. EJ, I anyway. know you had an out. Yeah. Um, we've been yeah. just here. We're probably going to keep reminiscing, I guess. No, you need keep to take going. Off, this is great. Yeah, yeah. I, need, I need to go. Okay. Uh, I have to go be normal tonight for a change. Normal. What does that mean? I don't know. It's, you know what that means. I was, I, was told to, I was told to do it. So anyway, thank you for having me on as always, guys. I do appreciate it. I, I you know, this is a privilege being on here with, with this company. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'll tip my cap. You guys keep on reminiscing. Good deal. Y'all, y'all know EJ. EJ's over here on our NSF lives. Uh, he streams on Twitch. He was playing some game about workers and resources earlier today. It looked like, um, it, oh wait, no, he's gone. He was supposed to be, I'm just doing a plug for his Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash EJ underscore SA. Somebody put the link in chat if you want to follow EJ other places. But uh, Workers and resources. That sounds like commie talk. EJ, EJ you're clear. Just go. Go quick. Okay, bye. Um, anyways, take it easy, EJ. People in, people in chat are asking what the hex code was. It's FF4F00. FF4F100. It's somewhere in the shot from Starbase right now that we're getting on Infinity. I guarantee you somewhere in there is the International Orange. It's one of those star-based long-range shots. Nice. <laughs> um, anyways, it's, that first video that we looked at, that was five years ago in a couple hours today. It's not like, oh, we had an anniversary or it's coming up in two weeks, so we're going to celebrate it now. Like It was literally today, five years ago, that that first video. Ah, there you go. There's Infinity. It's orange. It's, international, it's, it's orange. <laughs> But yeah, if you, think, want to hear, if you want to hear our live reactions to hitting a million, um, that I I am pretty proud of of that stream. Just because one, it was a really good Delta stream, and two, you know, despite the scrub, and two, because we had zero plan. So in classic NSF fashion, uh, it just sort of happened. And um, yeah, so if you want our live reactions to hitting a million, go back and watch the end of that Delta Force scrub stream. To, to be fair, we were trying to be like too cool for school. Like, ah, it's not a big deal. You know, like, yes, we were very excited, but we don't want to make like a big cringy, oh, it's the end, you know, declare success. It's fantastic. Like, yeah. Stand, on. stand like, on the aircraft carrier, mission accomplished. Yeah, mission accomplished. <laughs> like, eh. it's like the beginning. Like, 
more people should be able to share what we're doing. We want more people to be able to to be a part of the community and that sort of stuff. And it's like the first million, right? Um, I, we, I was specifically sort of playing it like, yeah, yeah, that's really awesome. That's amazing. So many people have clicked that button, but geez, this is, there's so much more we can do. There's so many more people who are interested in this or might be interested and don't even know it yet, you know? So anyways, what else, what else do we have, uh, on deck here chris do we have anything else we want to talk about or yeah, yeah i just want to go through the progression again because i'm it's sad sure. it's gone i was desperately hoping ej would still be here just for this bit because we went from my horrendous editing version uh, editing of mary's excellent clips which worked out because the clips were everything that's what i was mentioning about content it was everything yeah yeah to professionally edited videos with jack and braid i mean i can't I, my memory's horrendous these days but Jack and Brady, you, you, would it be fair to say you're more photography? Or is it just well, something where... So before I started working for NSF, like, monetarily, I was just contributing to NSF, right, as a photographer. At that time, I worked, and still do occasionally, in TV and film in Los Angeles. So I would be a camera assistant or an editor or an assistant editor. So I, I do many things because that's, you know, the nature of freelancing. Um, but, yeah, I... I I would say the uh, the majority of paying work I've gotten in LA has been editing of, of some kind, just because that's what I've been able to pick up. You know, you kind of move in certain circles, you know, certain people, they bring you on jobs and then that sort of snowballs. So, um, yeah, so I, I did, I did do a lot of editing at the time and it's just, it's just wild because it, it's soulless and not fun to edit like a shampoo ad or you know, uh, right. you know, were you editing shampoo ads I, before I, you were I, editing I have, NSF videos? I have edited a shampoo ad or casting <laughs> really? reels. Casting reels, not fun. Um, so you, you know, or, or like reality TV. Oh God! In fact, that's that's kind of weird. We're probably going off the rails here, but so I worked in reality TV for a bunch of years, and part of the skill set for uh, an associate producer or an assistant editor in reality TV is basically knowing the breadth of footage that you had so when a story editor or a different you know a producer or something comes in and is like hey we need a clip of joey saying oh no that we can cut to after the tree falls over or whatever i worked on i worked on axman um that horrible yeah, yeah i worked that horrible shit. anyways uh okay uh so so you need to know like oh right on tuesday six weeks ago you know, he stubbed his toe and went, oh, no, and we can use that for whatever story beat we're trying to manufacture because reality TV is a lie. And, like, that skill set has definitely helped me to know, like, oh, yeah, Starship, yeah, that one is the one that did this thing on this day. Like, it's it just sort of, it just sort of works. But um, <laughs> I, I really, I do want to point out, like, there is, a, the way a, a daily video works, like, it is not just throwing clips together and farting it out the door like there is jack gets mad at me because i call them I, I used to call them i don't try to call them this but i call them clip parades if, it was just if, like oh yeah just get all the clips and put them together if you right? want to infuriate me that is a real good way to do it uh because yeah, do because for real there is there is specific intention to the order of clips to the pacing of clips to what you highlight in the clip um because at the time and even still today there's so much going on that it can be hard to draw your eye to what's happening or these things are happening at different times on different days but you want to show the progression so you order these clips together and you show them in this speed and then you slow it down for the beauty shot when they flip the dome or whatever like there's a lot of of thought. the beauty shop when they flip the dome <laughs> I'm, I, you, you laugh but I, I would i would pay hard cold hard cash right now to see them flip like booster 15s aft dome because they're still doing it. They still manufacture them that way, but they flip them inside the Star Factory. And it used to be that we could see them flip a dome and be like, aha, there's more engines on this one. Or, aha, they flipped a dome. They flipped a dome. Yeah. So, anyways, that's, there's a, uh, we, we laugh, but oh man, I would, I would love to see a, a dome flip. Adrian! Uh, there's a dome flip story like there's a dome flip story in the back the annals of nsf where at some point uh it was live and we were what were we covering were we covering a test not a static fire or a cryo test or something and then a dome was being flipped in a yard and somebody cut to this live shot of the dome flip in the middle of this other test and everybody's screaming why are you showing a dome flip seriously <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking throw, about, right? Throw Patrick. Can we throw Patrick under the throw. bus? I think it was a Patrick. Yeah, that was Patrick. That did that. <laughs> like a, a new a new person who was helping us operate the live streams at the time, and they go to this dome flip, and everybody's like, "What are you doing?" What, but we don't get to see dome flips anymore, right? right. If only. That's okay. We know what it looks like. Uh, so well, we don't. Uh, there there we was don't. a reason why I asked Jack that question ages ago. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's because <laughs> most of our team are really multi talented in several skill sets. And I think that's probably one of the most fortunate things about the people who have found us and joined us is where they can do several things really well. Let's face it how many video editors and photographers out there could do an NSF Live like Jack does and come across as like, this well-loved personality. There's lots of luck involved with the people who are founders. <laughs> you can be find several people, multiple people that could do photos and editing and whatever. If you put out a advert on Twitter or whatever, but to find the right people is where the key thing is. And I want to kind of progress this on a little bit to where we went to the live streaming because let's face it, the channel was never doing any live streams. We were just doing like videos. There was never any kind of like live from the cape things or anything like that yeah then suddenly it's this this fella called kerbal space academy which is not his real name <laughs> surely not his real name <laughs> who's that guy yeah <laughs> and i'm just wondering if we can find it i've tried to give him a yes to ellis has found it there it's that is, right there yeah yeah, yeah there, there is well first of all there's that where um i, I think i replied with picard on riser <laughs> you there did you go. yes <laughs> okay, <so. laughs> Yes, Picard and Riser. That's how I like to think of myself. Uh, um, Riser. That's I haven't how he got thinks of himself. I nice. He's from Yorkshire. Uh, Patrick Stewart <laughs> is from Yorkshire, but I haven't got his gravitas, so I, I won't get away with it. <laughs> but that's how I like to come across as things. But this is the photo that got me yet the other day when we were doing the Delta Four stream. Is Chris G. And I, I made a point of thanking the previous people we've got, the previous people we've had who have left, which is always very sad. And everyone has it, every company has it, every channel has it where people leave. Usually it's because they've had enough or they want to leave or whatever. Ours are left because they've got opportunities to work with SpaceX. So yeah, yeah. that is a massive thing for us. But Chris G there, who's now with SpaceX, talking to Daz, and that's the lead in to all these live streams we do is finding Daz. I cannot, <laughs> em I'm going to make him blush, but I cannot emphasize enough how much. This place has survived, never mind thrived, thanks to Daz. Wouldn't be the same. It, wouldn't it, even be wouldn't, close to the same. Wouldn't be close. It'd be like <laughs> videos on the site, which we happen to put on YouTube. That'd how, be it. Look how red he's turning. But it's true. We're doing. We're just it's doing true. cool stuff. Yeah, but like I don't. You know, people will go. Oh yeah, I get what you mean, Chris. I could not even. I wouldn't be able to go into details about how much Daz does NSF. He is literally the boss now. Do not ever call me the boss. Daz is the boss, and rightly so. And thank God, so he is because it is. I will never explain it properly because I'm too Yorkshire. I keep using that because you're there, too Yorkshire. There is. That it's a real terrible excuse, but it is. I can never. I mean, Jack, maybe you can because you've got a brilliant way of putting things across. There's so much infrastructure and so much tinkering and so much messing around and finding out that has to get done in order to make things like this work. And Das was on the ground finding this stuff out and figuring it out and making these amazing streams possible on his own Twitch channel before the NASA space flight thing collab even happened. And because you had that breadth of knowledge and because you've continued to tinker and <laughs> learn cool things over the years, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just eternally thankful. And, and, and this is, this is exactly what we talk about when we talk about NSF being a community and NSF being a team. It's like any one part, like me by myself in a field, taking a photo of a plane or a rocket, who cares? I'm shouting into the void. You know what I mean? Like uh, me editing a video, who cares? Like even Mary, like absolutely being the greatest of all time out there shooting. If there's nowhere to put those videos that they get seen, that's a tragedy. Uh, and and Das, your ability to help us do these live events and everything else we do, um, whether it's live or not, because you know you also help with the just camera stuff and and just everything that I, I i i have to tell my story at some point like thank you right, i'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> stop talking i'll stop talking yeah, look, I'll, I, I'll... I have to tell this story and like i'm just go. my my cheeks yeah and wait there wasn't here we go where did jack just go jack just left I'm, I'm, okay he's back i'm forcing myself to go <laughs> away so you can talk like, can we can we do the do we have the tweet again like when i asked like does nasa spaceflight do 
live streams. I don't know if we can bring that back up again. Um, but I, I would do the Twitch streams, right? And we had the Kerbal Space Academy, and we were re doing outreach on Twitch, and that turned into, I don't know, let's go to a museum and play Kerbal, and oh, let's go see a real rocket launch. And my Twitch community supported all of that and is the reason we sort of figured out how to do all that, right? Um, but, but I would apply it to, like, NASA socials. And I would apply to the NASA socials as Kerbal Space Academy. <laughs> And the people at NASA, KSC, who must have been re reviewing these things, must have been like, oh, what the heck is Kerbal Space Academy? And sometimes you'd get the right person and they would approve it. And sometimes they would deny me because it's like, who are you? You're not doing articles every day. Like, you're, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I do educational outreach on live streams on Twitch using video games. And I'm like, what? Um, and so when we were doing that, like we would recreate missions and we would we would go through and we would do these live streams talking about the things that are going on. And every time I did a live stream, my source would be NASA Spaceflight, right? Because I would go to the NASA Spaceflight article that had the information about the launch that was happening. And I would tell my Twitch, my Twitch chat, like, oh, yeah, well, NASA Spaceflight, you know that they're a good source. Like, you can trust what they say. I'm going to let's bring this up like every time, every single time. It's a NASA Spaceflight article. Hey, let's go here. Because, you know, some people are just looking for outrage or clicks or whatever. But NASA Spaceflight, you know, you can trust NASA Spaceflight. And the reason that I sent the tweet was because NASA Spaceflight was somebody that I could trust to give me good information, to not just be like searching for clicks or searching for, oh, just drama information or whatever, you know? And that's what this tweet was from. Like I was out there and I was streaming Bangabadu. I interviewed some people, like families were there at Playa Linda. And I did this tweet just like out of the blue, like, I guess I'll just ask them, who knows? Um, and they responded, like, Chris, y'all actually responded. <laughs> I, I try and respond to everybody that is tough actually, because especially now. So if I ever don't reply to somebody, Please just send another one. I will eventually reply to everybody. <laughs> it's just sometimes it gets too busy and I miss things, but definitely. I'm like, I think it's my important. email's yeah. in my bio. <laughs> Good grief. I, I love that the Genesis tweet is a response with a Picard in a, in a, a Picard in a terry cloth robe on Risa, which you know, if you know anything about Star Trek, that's hilarious. Yeah. Risa is like the. I don't even know what to call it on the stream like that. Risa is the party planet. Let's put it it's that the way. Pleasure planet. Yeah. yeah, the party planet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Rocking the chest hair and everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, jeez. It, it took us a while to get it figured out. Like, uh, it was some emails back and forth. Maybe me accidentally naming the site something else. Um, and eventually we just worked it out. And it's like, yeah, I have all of this live stream equipment and i love doing this stuff and y'all have access to ksc and good information on launches and you're a trusted news source and can we work together like can i help you do live streams because nsf was somebody i trusted like i wouldn't have reached out to another place i reached out to nsf because i trusted nsf as a source to share with other people so anyways there's, there's that's more progression we could go through too like you know there's you, a lot more. you got you got uh so we started streaming right and then you very quickly furnished mary with a broadcast a, a, a broadcast pack. it pack wasn't even a pack then so that we could broadcast yeah it was a it was like a tote bag that mary or a bucket that mary <laughs> had all of the, the separate pile of stuff <laughs> um dude how like in the same way that we've seen spacex progress from like really shoddy looking stainless steel tanks to like an actual <laughs> spacecraft it's, we've we've followed a very similar progression here at nasa space not to call your work shoddy but you know what i mean no no you know what i mean no no we had pan link like we had pan link because we had an lte antenna right but the L lte antenna needed a ground plane sometimes you need a, a piece of metal that's flat to act as a waveguide to reflect the waves into the antenna you can't just like put them on the ground or whatever and so mary literally got a cast iron frying pan and i was like mary we need a piece of we need something to put it needs a flat metal surface under it. and she got a cast iron frying pan and put it in the front yard with an LTE antenna on it and called it Panlink. And that's how Mary was uploading videos and trying to do, I don't think we ever, I don't know if we, because we could put it on the roof of the van. The magnetic antenna would work on the roof of the van and the roof of the van would serve as the, the ground plane, right? If I'm not mistaken, um, she would drive around looking for the one spot with the best cell signal because was signal. And, and I think to this day, I mean, it's not like Mary has fiber in Starbase. She still has a tough time getting her footage uploaded just because <laughs> a photo. that's the nature. Of, oh, oh, look, pan link. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's actual pan link. And it's hilarious because now she does use Starlink, but 
you know, in the same way that uh, technology progresses, she has gotten better cameras, and the better cameras create bigger files. And bigger files. We're once again in the same position where it's like, how can we get how can we get Mary's clips uploaded faster? Because it's it's not trivial. That is for sure. I love that we have a picture of Pan that Link. is Pan Link. Like y- 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 y'all joke, but. At some point, a majority of the Mary videos that you were seeing on YouTube coming out of Starbase were being transmitted to the internet via that antenna on that cast iron pan on that piece of patio furniture outside of her house. Yep. 100%. (laughs) It's amazing. It's amazing to think how far we've come and how far we will go. So we (laughs) got Mary broadcast pack. Back to the moon and beyond. Oh, we're doing the, the audio clips too. I, I gave I gave Kevin the intro stings. I think he's uh, he's having a little fun. Um, Sounds like it. <laughs> so, so Mary has a broadcast pack, right? We start broadcasting the tests from a broadcast pile. Broadcast pile. It was literally we, carried in a bucket I, at one I, I point. Believe, it was a bucket of stuff. I do believe she called it uh, a pile. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so then, <laughs> around then, um, I I think it was like Michael and I were like. And we don't really talk about this much, but we've talked about it a little bit more lately. Um, we used to kind of hold it more close to the chest, but we were like, we should get some land. We should we should buy some. Of, oh, we geez. should buy some. <laughs> we should buy some land out here so that we can put cameras on them twenty four seven. Because Sell it, this because story. at some point this is going to be a real spaceport, and if it is, then no one's going to be able to be around during a launch. So we should buy land and put the cameras on them. And then we did. Uh, and so I do want to shout out to one particular person um, who we, I, I was thinking to myself the other day, like we did not mention them on the uh, Delta Four Heavy stream, just because there's so many people with NSF that it can be hard to mention every single person. And if I don't mention you specifically, please don't hate me. Um, but Lar, remember Lar? Helping us, yeah. helping us with the whole land oh, thing. Yes, that was that was like a years, a, a multiple years long saga. Of it was a very long time where we were looking at properties and all this sort of stuff because we believed in Starbase. Like we believed that SpaceX was actually going to accomplish things at Starbase. And long before there was an OLM or anything like that, we we're like, you know something, SpaceX is going to go for it. Let's be ready if SpaceX goes for it. And so for over a year, we were trying to find, okay, here's an angle, here's an angle. Jack, you're like walking out of, across the across the dunes and across the grass yeah. and that sort of stuff. I, and it's like, get us some pictures from there. Some of my favorite times in Starbase, absolute favorite times in Starbase, are when I was walking around in the middle of nowhere with a GPS transmitter looking for where what ended up being our North Beach campsite, our South Beach campsite, our highway yep. campsite. Like, uh, the... Uh, just a Herculean effort from everybody involved. And I really, uh, again, I don't think we've really talked about this, but it's our new logo, by the way, we're going to move to this in a week. Retro. I love it. (laughs) Uh, This was a big bet. Like SpaceX was still, you know, doing things in Florida at the time. Like this bet could have, I mean, we were more responsible than that, but this bet was a big enough bet that it could have had serious repercussions if yep. SpaceX just turned tail and abandoned Starbase, which could 100% have happened. I remember having discussions in the yep. in the process of doing all this and setting up Starbase Live and thinking, this is a fantastic, I'm so glad we're doing this, but I'm also terrified that in a year and a half, SpaceX will be like, you know what, we're moving to, to Florida, Kennedy Space Center all the way, and then we'd be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> what are we going to do with this? <laughs> right, right. So, it, it's a, it was a huge bet. To your point, Das, the reason I even thought of saying that is because you said we believed in Starbase, which we did. We did. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember, Michael, um, I think I had some no idea about, I won't mention any costs, but I had no idea about land costs. And um, <laughs> I, saw, I said to Michael, I said, oh, about this much? He goes, add, few, add some zeros. And I was like, oh. Add some zeros. <laughs> and then when, when Jack was telling his story about that, you know, what the future may hold, Michael's reaction would be, wait a Buy more land. <laughs> oh, Michael. <laughs> there was a time where it was like, here we go. The best like, part, this is another idea. The best part about all that is Michael and I were totally in cahoots. And so we could like good cop, bad cop it because we both wanted it to happen. But, oh but Michael is Michael and can be a little abrasive at times because he's not going to sugarcoat things, which that's why we love him. Sometimes you need someone to tell you harsh truths or just be like. This is highway, by the know, way. This, this is the highway spot. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going, Jack. Sorry. And so, you know, but. But that approach, you know, sometimes you get more flies with honey than with 
vinegar or whatever but you get my point whatever so yeah so michael and i would good cop bad cop like we need land oh we need land like it oh man this the to, to, to convince Chris B that this is something that we should actually do. And to your credit, Chris B, you listened um, because as the old adage goes, Michael is smart. Listen to yeah. Michael. That's the good yeah. cop, bad cop right there. That was an intentional phrase that I, that I would repeat. Um, we we were on the hook for that too because it was like, oh, are we going to like invest in this? And is this stuff actually going to work if we invest in it? <laughs> like there was an entire idea where we didn't know how we would be able to stream from Starbase. And we had a ton of experience with Mary out there doing streams from the van and the side of the road and run around. Do we have signal? Like, can we actually make this happen? Because we didn't want to, all right, we've invested in Starbase and now nothing works. There was a time when that was a possibility. And well, here we are. We got it. It worked. We got it working. But uh, can anyways. I, can I find a quick synergy? Uh, first of all, let's thank Mark. Garrett's and that goes back even further. Absolutely, yeah, because he did a, a yeah. super chat. I was going to mention him anyway. I mentioned him in the Delta Four stream. We talk about well, the channel would never have been a thing if A and B and D hadn't happened. There would be no NSF site after year one if it wasn't for Mark. Yep. I remember Mark. I think his first post was I don't know if it was his first post or one of his early posts. A dancing external tank video in the, in the forum, and it was like funny. That, funny to the point I reacted, and then we got to know Mark, and Mark's an amazing programmer, and that's probably just a really a weak way of saying what he can do. But he then, I mean, this is this is what's happened literally all the way through. People have been in our community and said, "I can do this," and I've like said, "Great, let's try it," and we found everybody that way. We've not gone out and put an advert in Space News' newsletter, or uh, magazine, I should say, sorry, Space News. Uh, like a uh, job like, posting or whatever. Posting like... a magazine, yeah. They've all been in our community who come to us and said, I'm good at this. And 99 out of 100 times, they are very good at what they do. And Mark is a great example of that in the very early days, which is probably more key because that's where we work big. And grasp the whole thing by the the neck and sorted out and took us forward. If that hadn't have happened, if Mark had not got involved, there would be no talk on this. There would be no NSF live right now. There'd be no channel. And there'd be, yeah. I guarantee you there'd be no site. I guarantee you there'd be no site. I could not have taken it, even with like some mine help, it would never have worked. It's quite a complicated way we do this we could easily have had um, a reddit server a discord server and yep. some free site you can build remember this is 19 years ago where you had to go and get a webmaster to build the site for you you could not go on wix or something like that you get a template or whatever yeah, no right templates. Yeah. There's no templates it's not a thing there was yeah. no squarespace no like squarespace yeah, you had exactly. to get someone to build it for you and he he, he grasped it off my like, he will he will laugh at my own manager because that's what I was using this content management system and he got us on to the proper stuff, you know. So Mark is probably with without a doubt absolutely key to this whole conversation because without Mark, we would not be talking about oh yeah, the channel five years ago, start a channel. So that was important just to bring it up because I don't say it enough. No, this maybe, it, wouldn't, wasn't there like a coming soon banner or something, I think like 20 years ago before the website was actually created? It's coming up on 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. Mark posted something the other day, and I was like, wait, that math, carry the one? That's like 2004, I think. Right, wow. so it was post-Columbia. Post I was on the old message boards. There was very few. There was space.com and a newsletter, and that was it. Mm -hmm. That was all you could do on the internet. It was the early days of the internet to start with. That's how, that's how old I am. <laughs> and... Basically, we, we set up the format of having a new site and a forum, but all the graphics and stuff were like, a lot of it was just me. And I'm terrible to this day at stuff like that. So you can imagine what it was like, just putting together. So that's why it's kind of a staggered start before we got really going. I think the real kind of like when we started pushing forward with a natural site was April yeah. 2005. So we're coming up on 19 years for the site now, which is crazy to think about. No I, can, I can think back to those days quite well. Look at and the old... It, it was all shuttle. We nearly called it shuttlespaceflight.com. People go, where did the name come from? We were only covering the space shuttle. And yeah. Venture Star, X-33, things like that. So it was all NASA stuff. Dude, Dead too soon. Spaceflight. Yeah, uh, it was too soon. And Tori Bruno did say recently, I'll grab your hole, that they could actually make that work today with space technology. Anyway, oh, moving geez. quickly on. It was all about that. It was all about the shuttle missions. And I used to write, after work, 
every hour, every evening, just write one shuttle article. We had all the NASA guys helping us with with documentation and help, whatever. You, that was back in the days where if um, the space shuttle had an issue, you could ask the press relations people at NASA, and they would send you a PDF that yeah. you cleared from export control and an interview with the engineer who worked on it. It was so much access because they had no one else really out there. Apart from Florida Today and Bill Howard, people like that, that's the only people who would report on the space shuttle. So they were desperate for people to report on the shuttle properly so they'd give you access to everything. It's so different now with commercial space, but it was how we all started, and that's why we did it every night, just space shuttle stories. And then we just went from there, and a certain Mr. Musk emailed me saying, I'm going to start this company. Would you like to interview me? <laughs> Seriously, I've still got an email. And um, it's... It's how it's kind of like SpaceX first came on the stage, and we thought Falcon One, that's different. Yeah, and Falcon Nine, that's different. And then commercial space just took over, and where we are now with the amount of rocket launches and things we can cover is crazy. And it's only going to get bigger as well. There's so many other companies coming online. Yep. And can I can I do a thing really quick? Um, part of what I'm really enjoying about this discussion is that. Kevin Michael Reed is in the background, and Kevin's been with us for a while now. But I'm curious, Kevin, how much of this lore? How, did you, how much did of you the know? NSF lore were you were you aware of? Because I know you know basically <laughs> all of it, but we're going real deep into the weeds here. <laughs> we're going deep, yeah. Um, I mean, I knew some of it. I've I've heard stories every once in a while, um, but you know, I, I'm learning a lot tonight, and this is actually great. <laughs> <laughs> This is the this is the rig arrival. Brady actually went out, and we found out we were tracking the rigs, and we found out where this rig was coming in, and we like banded together, and we sent Brady out there with a broadcast kit and his cameras, and he's he was there as this rig came out of the fog. So that's we actually had our red banner on the bottom. I think the red banner has been around for a long time. So that's one of my favorite things that we've done as an organization was break the look, story. Look, look about I have the to oil stop rigs. you for a second. Oh, look, Moldy but, Space Industries. Look, like he's one of our supporters Where? today, and this was in so the, long in ago. The, in the video, Moldy was super oh, chatting even the way video. back then, <laughs> which is why we love Moldy. Well, part of the yep. reason why we love Moldy, also the Kerbal Crimes, also Steve is just an amazing person. The Kerbal Crimes, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good grief, I didn't even know when this is from. This is, seems like forever ago, but it seems like it just happened. So. so then, I mean, we can keep doing progression if we want. Like, then we had the land, then we did Starbase Live. And saying yep. that in two sentences does a huge disservice to the insane amount of work that went into both of those things. But uh, but after that, what what came next? Was was KSC next, or was that McGregor? Because they were all they were being oh, the worked order? on. They were work, being worked on like in parallel. Uh, oh jeez! But, but that was those were the two next steps. Like I, th I think we had Fleet Cam next because yeah, the cam. first the first twenty four seven camera we had out was Fleet Cam. That's right. And that was like Fleet Cam lived on my back deck, and we figured out how to make Fleet Cam esque stuff work with our systems and you know live streaming and that sort of stuff. And then I packed up Fleet Cam and I took it down to Florida and we installed it at the port. And we had Fleet Cam before we had a lot of the infrastructure we had. There was Fleet Cam. It was like the first thing. And when it started working, like we plugged that thing in and we're like, no way, you can see video of the port. This is amazing. Um, that was the first like camera we did like that was Fleet Cam. Heck yeah. And yeah. Then we, we have to talk about the low altitude hops as well. Like yeah the sn8 through 15 i think that is really where we like we hit Gosh. our stride in terms of finding an audience i mean we would do the 12-hour streams and uh -huh. it, was, it was just they're just some really good times and just insane amount of work and then those streams are where we got people like alex and adrian and where we got really cool merch like the spread shirt which was the from spreadsheet. which was from Adrian actually spreadsheeting out the timing of tank farm events way back then, which we still do. Which Alex was able to time out both static fires this week to an insane level, just yeah. based on using that same technique. And uh, it's just there you go. There's the spreadsheet on Baby Adrian, which we also the spread we, shirt on Baby. We, Adrian. we call him ba Babe Babe Adrian. Ba anyways, um, yeah, I don't know. It didn't work. Anyways, <laughs> it's okay. That it's it's just I say it over and over again, but we would none of us would be 
NSF without everybody else. And this, yeah. and this, this was Adrian's application, by the way. <laughs> He's like, hey, can I work? I'd like to write articles for NSF. And he sent that picture. And the slow True story. The slow aggregation, like the snowball rolling downhill and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger is just a credit to all of the insanely dedicated and talented people that make up this organization. And it's it's not one person. It's not us three. It's not you know we're we're greater than the sum of our parts it's just it's awesome it's so awesome i've always said um people do ask me how 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 do something like you do how do you how do you start something like this i say the the only thing i really say as a stress point is surround yourself with bright people chris i think if you do if you do that then you're in a good place i am not a smart person and well, I have surrounded myself with very smart people, and I'm, that's why it's a success. What and you that's are, that's why I get very embarrassed when people go, "Cruz, Cruz." No, it's not me. We Jack's going to say it. No, no, I don't care. I'm no, talking. No, what? No, 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 no. What you are is incredibly good at identifying talent and building a good team. You're good at many other things too, like um, knowing about horses. Bandy cam, bandy cam, thumbnails. Bandy yeah. cam. Um, <laughs> but no, you have you have built an exceptional team, and I am extremely honored and humbled and thankful every single day of my life that I get to be a part of it. That that is the big thing. Like we're a bunch of enthusiasts who love this stuff, right? Like this isn't like oh, there was a job posting for somebody who's going to shoot rocket launches, and well, I shoot things, so I guess I could apply for that job. Like that's not how it works. It's like you love chasing these things and you love keeping up with these things. And it's like, how, how can I do this? And one person can do like this much stuff, right? Like one person can be this enthusiastic. And then when you create a community where more people can be involved, Chris, like you did with the forums, that was like the place where people could come together in all of these skill sets and all of this knowledge from all of these enthusiasts who love this stuff could come together and pool their resources and effort. That's where L2 came from, right? Yeah. That's where the forum came from. That's where all of that original content that was created and generated, it was almost like, like gravity forming a planet because you created this environment and then things saw it and they just started being attracted to it and it just built and built and built because you made them. It's like, if you build it, they will come sort of deal, you know? But everybody's enthusiast. We love doing this stuff. Yeah, but it's very important. That's why we call it a team. There's, you know, the hierarchy isn't a thing. It's a team and it is a team effort and everyone puts in more hours than they need to or should do. And I think that's the best thing because when people are putting the effort in and spending more hours than they probably could get away with in a, in a normal nine to five kind of a job, then that's when things improve because the effort is there, the momentum's there, and that's the important thing. Yeah. And yeah. Just as an aside, like I do get DMs occasionally or friends that are photographers or whatever to hit me up and be like, you know, uh, how do I, how do I get a job at NSF or how do I work at NSF or how do I do what you do? Um, and even like leaving NSF out of it, if this is something that you like, if you're passionate about rockets or anything, whether it's, you know, coding software or working on cars or whatever it is, um, if you're passionate about something, just start doing it because yeah. it, like if I was looking for, you know, someone, uh, to be a photographer for NSF, which is not a role that I have or a thing that I would do. But as an example, um, you know, I would look for someone who's already doing it, who clearly cares because we all, that's, that's exactly how we all started. We all started because yeah. we care. We were, we, it was something we would be doing anyways, even if we were just shouting into the void. Um, but we're extremely lucky in that we don't have to do that. So start, like it's the best advice I can give to any artist or any person trying to learn a new skill or just do anything that you want to do. It's just is there's a million barriers in the way that it's never going to be perfect when you're starting out. I look back at my old photos and I'm like, dear Lord, that was trash. Why did I edit, edit it that way? Why did I shoot it that way? But uh, it's it's absolutely like just start. And eventually, five years later, you're going to look back and be like, holy cow, I'm glad I started wow. when I did. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't always work out that way, y'all. Like, like sometimes you can spend a lot of time doing something you love and it, it doesn't come together that it's way. True. And maybe you don't need it to. Maybe you still just have fun with it or whatever. But what we've been able to do, because y'all keep showing up, right? Because there's this place that can be a community that 
people can come and they can talk about things and they support what we do and all like all the different things. There's a whole queue of super chats here that I haven't read um, because we're just talking about hopefully interesting stuff here. Um, that's what makes it so that this can keep happening. Like it's not some big company that's just writing a check and like, well, I don't know, we're going to profit 10% on this, this quarter. So we'll keep doing this. <laughs> like that's not how it goes. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, we can, we can guarantee you and Daz can back me up on this because and Jack can as well. Everyone can. When you see streams where people are super chatting and buying merch and whatever, you're probably thinking, well, they're raking it in. It isn't the case. No one's getting rich off this. It's yeah, all getting it's... put back into what we do because the important thing, that even makes business sense before anyone thinks that's just some speech. It makes business sense to invest into what you can do in the future because if you stand still and think, that's all we need to do. We'll have these live streams up at Starbase and McGregor and, and KSC. That's all we need to do. That's fine. We can, you know, we, everything else is profit. You can't work that way. You've got to think, what's the next thing we can do? Because I guarantee you, when you stand still, you will lose people. You've always yeah. got to be a future thinking site, should we say a site, where you go forward and think of the next thing we can do. And that's what we're always aiming to do. Things that you've not yet seen is what we're working on now. <laughs> like, y'all support us, and then suddenly there's a kite cam. Like, what? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself, Chris. Oh, jeez. I mean, imagine if it, now we were like, oh, it'd be cool if we had land for cameras and stuff. You just couldn't do it. You just couldn't work. You just couldn't yeah, do it. It wouldn't work anymore. Yep. Anyway, it's, it, that's that's how I like to say it. Like, y'all know that I like to say when folks show up to the streams and they're a part of the community, they're like believing in us and they're trusting us to continue to bring them cool stuff. Right. We don't know. We have a lot of wacky ideas. Not everything pans out exactly right. Believe me. Um, but when when y'all show up and support what we do and you could conglomerate on to this big body that is the community um, and make it so we can keep doing these things, it's like the, the highest compliment that y'all are trusting us to keep doing this. So the super, I'm looking at the super chats in the queue. I'm like, doing this right here we have a, um, we do have a question from james atkinson gosh. that says when is das flying to china and russia to set up cameras also japan Ooh. please also Kuru? either of those places i'll do japan um <laughs> Kuru is on the table china china and russia me. it's too much of a commute if they drop a stage on one of the cameras fair <laughs> Oh, geez, we have ideas. We have all sorts of ideas. What are we doing? Uh, gosh, we could just sit here and, and talk about things forever. Um, do we have anything? <laughs> okay, now there's all sorts of ideas in the back channel as well. Um, what do we need to still talk about here? Chris, have we not said anything? We're going to keep doing this. Y'all keep showing up. We're going to keep doing streams, and we're going to keep putting out videos. We have all sorts of ideas, but have we missed anything in our in our whirlwind five year celebration here? I did say when we get to the milestone of a million subscribers that would shave Alex's head. Um, that that is in plan. Yep. Alex doesn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know. I am. I have a plane ticket to Spain, and uh, you're just going to wake up bald one day like Lisa in that one Simpsons episode. NASA space flight not responsible for whatever shenanigans, international shenanigans y'all are planning. <laughs> the other thing was I was going to do a twelve hour shuttle stream. Now I. I can't do, I don't think I'll be able to survive 12 hours talking, never mind anything else. But we are going to do shuttle Sunday. Next Sunday, a week on Sunday, it's next shuttle okay. Sunday. But we're also thinking of doing some live, as if there were live shuttle launches and do commentary on them, which I think would be fun. So we need to set that up. To, yeah, that's definitely going to yeah. happen as well. So we, there'll, be, there'll be more shuttle, let's put it. The short story short is more shuttle. At some point, we are going to drag you creaking and screaming to the States so that you can visit some shuttles. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> you haven't seen a rocket launch, have you? Uh, that's not a question to ask me, <laughs> but um, I would love to see the spatials in their retirement homes now, especially after seeing Jack and Daz doing a stream from California. That looks an amazing exhibit. I thought Atlantis exhibit wouldn't be beaten, but I think oh, yeah. it in California Science Museum will be. The full stack is going to be nuts when they get that thing all running. Like We should definitely work with the museum to see if we can't go and walk around that exhibit when it's opening. That's going to be really cool. So yeah. excited. <laughs> Also, can we get more uh, two astronauts, two funny astronauts or whatever? Like, we need... Oh, I need, that's in work. I need April more 10th. of that. What? Yes, we're having another... Yeah, we already have an episode scheduled, April 10th. Two days after the ellipse, ellipse eclipse, uh, Mike and Garrett are coming back over here and we'll doing some live recording of their Two Funny Astronauts podcast with NSF on April 10th. Indeed. We'll have a special go. guest. I can't announce it yet. It won't be just Indeed. them, though. It'll be another 
astronaut you know was that oh oh right kevin has the oh is that do we want to talk about the intro stings (laughs) we can talk about the intro stings yeah yeah we do you said two funny astronauts we have something coming up on april 10th that we have scheduled with them and we're we're just about to release another thing working with them so that is definitely a thing jack neat if it was messing it'd be igniting in the flare correct I was can prompting. We go, can we I go was, through those? I was prompting go through those? somebody to say yes. That was. I'm not an idiot. I swear. I may have a smooth brain, but I'm not an idiot. It's most of the time. <laughs> can can we, d- Kevin? Can we play? Can we play those in order so we can talk about what, what each thing is? I didn't number them, so he's just gonna have to go uh, from memory. Wh- wh- just like, play them then. Yeah, which order is which? Yeah, yeah. Jack's gonna know this better than me. Oh yeah. I mean, play us one. The, the the real thing is there are m- many more clips that don't make it in. <laughs> like, there's only so much intro music. In fact, I've extended the intro longer over time to be able to add in more sound bites because there's, think he... th- there's so many that just get left on the cutting room floor. But yeah, the Moo is a... I think it's a stock Moo, or is that an actual McGregor Moo? No, it's moo? an actual McGregor Moo. Yeah, that's an actual cow at McGregor Mooing. Nice. If it's the clip I, I got together, yeah, no, it's that's an actual McGregor Moo. Yeah, then that's, that's the McGregor Moo. That's perfect. <laughs> Propulsion continues to be normal. That's uh, the Spruck. Norminal. Yes. That's the Spruck. Inspruck. John Inspruck. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to have the famous Norminal slip up on a SpaceX stream back in the day? That is, of course, Roger Shuttle. Atlantis. Shuttle I don't know Atlantis. what mission that's from. I don't know. I, I think it's 93. Uh, yeah. I could tell you if I booted it. Actually, hang on. I'll, I'll boot 93. up the. 93 was Columbia. <laughs> he just throws off the top of his head like 93 was Columbia. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> Hang on. I'm I'm opening the uh yes. I'm opening the project file right now with uh with the intro, I'll be able to tell you. <laughs> oh jeez. That's that's all that's honestly oh my cheating. Oh my god. That's Artemis One. Oh that's god. from Artemis oh One. Yeah, that's like behind the scenes at Artemis One when they saw that they actually lit and that thing was going to go. Yeah, that, remember, that's after like, I don't even know how many scrubs. And I was like yep. 20 feet away, 30 feet away from where Chris G and some other photogs were. And uh, you can very clearly hear Chris G freak out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> in the, in the best way. Right, Let's see. Where is. Pressure looks good. That's Delta Heavy from yeah. Vandy. I think that one is N R O L. Uh, oh, where is it? This is great broadcasting. N R O L and forty seven is what that would be. Yeah, forty seven. Oh, there's the SCE to Ox. Yeah, that was Apollo. Yeah, isn't that ten? Sure. No, tw- which one is that? No, the one that got struck by lightning is the SC Docs. That's 12. 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody knows the story of SC Docs. That's like an entire thing where the one random engineer who remembered the one thing was like, oh, yeah, just try this one thing. And it fixed like the entire mission instead of aborting it. Oh, uh, so, Roger Roll Atlantis is STS 135. STS 135. The very there last shuttle flight. All right. Roger Roll Atlantis. Nice. I'll play that one again. Nice. Kevin's got like a soundboard now. <laughs> <laughs> well i was saying we need off. that is uh what is that percy touchdown i think that's percy touchdown that was from the jpl stream and we got the audio from that and we heard that it was yeah after the seven minutes of terror or whatever yeah Gobbling up. i think that is also uh which one that's from sts 135 standby Up. We're no, seeing here. That's I am one. What is it from? I am one. No, wait, no. Uh, sorry, I'm looking. No. Oops, leaks, leaks. I'm looking at a, a new, at a new version of. The... <laughs> There's a new version of the intro you're working on. Shut up. <laughs> Leak. <laughs> <laughs> that's my job. Uh, I can't. Throttling Which... up. Just gonna play throttling up over and over again. I can't find throttling up. Where's throttling up? Uh oh. I don't know. Play the next one. Go to the next one, Jack. If you find it, tell us. <laughs> 343 unfolds to go. 
Ah, uh, yes. That's Hagen talking about uh, James Hagen. Webb. Yep, L on the live stream. Water towers can fly. <laughs> <laughs> There's Tim. <laughs> Yeah, people for a long time thought that was me. Nope, not me. I am diligently no, I'm diligently quiet during launches, even to the point of yeah, unplugging yeah. Starlink to T minus five minutes so that I don't get generator sound in my audio and ruining <laughs> the live stream. Uh, oh good grief. So yeah, not me, Tim. <laughs> what? We should, oh, so uh, Kevin thinks we should tell the story about the Starlink being unplugged. I Jack, mean, that's your story I mean, to tell. We've told the story. I unplugged Starlink uh, for IFT2 at like T minus five. It was probably more like T minus seven, but either way, it was T minus way too few. And I thought Starlink was going to come back, but I didn't want generator audio in my launch audio. And uh, yeah, that's why my feed was not live for IFT2. And that is why Sean could not control his remotely controlled cameras for IFT2. Um, because I'm a smooth brain, as we have established multiple times on this stream. You can build all the infrastructure you want at Starbase, but you can't make them drink it. That wow. doesn't really work. Wow. But... <laughs> uh, STS... <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. STS-209? No, that's got to be 93. That's got to be 93 for throttling up. From the throttle up? Yeah. <laughs> What else do we have? I, I know one we're missing. There's an internal meme, Doss, about me saying I have no cameras. And, and there's a reason for that. It's Jack's fault <laughs> that I have no cameras. <laughs> oh, the, the worst part is, is I consider my shot of IFT2 to be probably the coolest thing that I've ever shot. And as I've established many times on our live streams, my very favorite thing that I do with NSF is the live streams and is bringing the camera views to people around the world. That's my favorite thing. It's so exciting. <laughs> the rush I get from that is better than anything on this planet. And uh, the, the kick in the gonads to not be able to have my feed live because I was so dumb that I unplugged Starlink because <clears throat> I'm an idiot. Uh, suffice to say, it won't happen again. And there was a wireless network you could have been connected to. And there, and there was, was a, a physical was a cable you could have been plugged yeah, into. Yeah, and there was yeah, a router that you yeah. could have. And there was a, like so many yeah. things. Oh my gosh. And I'm over here screaming. The other but, part that hurts you know is I, I also flew a drone for Flight 2 the same way I flew a drone for Flight 1. And I was in such a panic about Starlink being unplugged and not working that I never focused the drone shot. Which oh, the Flight 1 drone shot is cool, but the Flight 2 drone shot would have been way better. But I, I never... It's just out of focus. I'm a big, dumb, smooth brain it, idiot. No, folks, th this is a big thing, too, that we run into a lot. Like, every time we do something, we could have done it better. Like, we're almost never happy. Like, we do really amazing things, and we, we are happy. We're like, okay, what now? That was really cool that that worked. But every single time, it's like, okay, what can we do better? Like, what can we do better next time? Different microphones, different this, different that. Have another camera ready to go. Like, every single time, we come up with something that we can do better because we care. Like, we, we want to do a good job. We want to do a good job covering this stuff for you. So every single... Like, Jack, you beat yourself up, and you're like, oh, I'm not smart, I'm a smooth... And whatever. Like, you care about what you're doing, and you want to do a good job for all the folks that are watching. Exactly, yeah. Like, and if, if you go you know, back and listen to the IFT2 stream, the post-launch reactions, we were all like, yeah, that was amazing! But I also distinctly remember being on stream being like, I'm a colossal idiot. And then people in chat being like, you're not an idiot, Jack. And it's like, thank you. Also, I'm an idiot. But for real, like, we care about but what we do. you don't know what I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we care about what we do and every single time we we broadcast, including this very broadcast here, we're constantly trying to identify things that we can do better. I mean, that's why we yeah. changed the format of NSF Live. It's like, how can we make this better? So always, 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 always trying to do better and that's only possible because of everybody's support. Can't be said yep. enough. Yep, yep. We have liftoff. Oh, what is oh, what is that? What does we have liftoff? Stand by. I actually don't know what that's from. Stand by. There's quite a lot of STS ninety three. Leroy Kane was um, involved with that, and it was actually it was John Shannon. Sorry, apologies. John Shannon was the flight director for STS ninety three, the launch flight director, and he is now heavily involved with SLS. Uh, but, we have we have liftoff was NROL forty seven from Slick Six. Okay. Delta Heavy. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. We rise together, back to the moon and beyond. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's Daryl Nail from uh, yep. from Artemis One. Fun fact: I wanted to include Booster 
but I, I didn't want to like include it in like a mean way. I'm not trying to be mean to Daryl. I just think it's an iconic, yeah. it's an iconic soundbite from Space Flight. So I wanted to include it, but that got kind of got vetoed. But that said, we still have uh, and here we go, which now when I hear version, like when I go back and watch an old, old stream and, and here we go, isn't there, it just feels wrong. Um, <laughs> and then we also have, you know, we rise together and then I mashed, we rise together with the Chris B f- or the Chris G freak Woo-hoo. out scream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, Oh, Oh, I, l- I love, <laughs> I love, uh, the intro sound bites. Like they are my baby. I love them. Like my children. Nice. What else do we have, Kim? Yeah, that's Chris. Chris G losing his mind. <laughs> Is that from Artemis as well? Yes. Or? Yes. Yeah. That's Chris G just screaming. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's water towers can fly. Yes. So yeah, the, yeah. the actual quote from Tim is not water towers can fly. Yes, it's water towers can fly. Then there's I think some chatter or a couple other words and then he screamed yes and so for uh-huh. editing magic of editing which goes back to how we started the stream is we that talked a lie? about this at the beginning is of the that show i don't know maybe <laughs> right oh jeez. we don't need any more of these chris which yeah. mission is that i didn't hear it sorry can we replay oh, yikes you bet concur we don't That's need any more of these three. that's the end of uh, ascent for Columbia, yeah. where they were having obviously a fuel link during the SSME, which got hit by a gold pin, and he had underspeed, and that's why it was a low level lux cut off. That's where the external tank literally runs out of propellant and it automatically shuts the engines down as a result, and that's why they went yikes because that's never a good thing. Yeah, it was a very spicy launch. Like there were so many things that just totally barely things, got into yeah. orbit and they, i don't even know if they really understood it until afterwards but at the end of that they're like yikes you bet concur we don't need any more of these yeah yeah put that in the big bag you know that is, is that, that's Jack? from apollo um let's see i forget i think it's i want to say 17 okay um they're they're hopping around on the moon and they find, you know, the moon is, is just gray. Uh, they found a whole bunch of orange material, which ended up being orange glass. And uh-huh. so that is where it's orange and put it in the big bag. Gino came from talking to Gene. Uh, uh, Gene um, starts with his C. Cer- uh, Cernan. Cernan. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Wanted, I wanted to say Gene Kranz. I don't know why my brain was wrong. Different um, Gene. Yeah. Different space Gene. Um, so, yeah, both of those are from Apollo 17. One because orange and two put it in the big bag gino uh is right when strata launch is flying by and it's, it's it is a, it's a big plane so there See, you go i i always thought that that was something from strata launch comms because it goes over the strata launch thing i didn't actually know that was another part of the uh the apollo 17 sample collection reel yeah no, another another huh. fun point of contention behind the scenes on the intro development is that the sounds you hear are not always related to the thing you're seeing on screen right they're right they're two separate things sometimes they line up like it's orange happens when you see an orange rocket but uh, i think but, that's yeah. clever though like i like the fact that it's it's orange and it shows that it's orange rocket but they're two completely not related things besides the fact that they're space related i think that fits really well indeed indeed <laughs> <laughs> i think which which audio do we have we have all the audio in there but going to be able to name which audio that is. <laughs> no, I know. I have it right here. Hang on. Uh, it's, it's Booster 7. I, it might be Booster 7. It might be uh, sh- uh, SN4. <laughs> Let's see. What is the file name for that? Jack's going to say for sure in, in the actual uh, video editing file here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Booster 7. There you go. Yep, B7. Your first Starship stream, Alex? Oh. Decollage. <laughs> Decollage. Decollage. Is that is from, from James Webb? Is that from James Webb again? Yep. Decollage. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's funny because I'm going go. through the project file trying to figure out which soundbite is which. I can yep. hear the new ones. And uh, I'm like, oh, God, I hope it's not coming through the microphone. <laughs> it's not coming through the mic. <laughs> Leaks. <laughs> And here we go. Oh, here we go. Artemis 1 again. Yeah, we got a lot of Artemis 1 in there. I mean, how could you not? Indeed. 
<laughs> Thanks, Chris. Chris G indeed. saying indeed. <laughs> Do you know how many streams I had to go through to find a clean a, indeed? A good clean indeed. And it's not even the best indeed. It's just a workable <laughs> indeed. In fact, I went to the members' Discord and was like, can anyone help me find a Chris G indeed? Because I could not. <laughs> Um, so thanks to them for their help, because from time to time, I, I will go downstairs to the member discord and say, hey, uh, does anyone have a clip of blah? Uh, and it's, they're extremely helpful. There, you, I'm surprised you didn't just have them do an Indeed pickup, right? Which would all, honestly have been sort of cheating to just get a raw yeah, Indeed no, that, pickup. Yeah, no, that doesn't. I, although that's a fantastic idea, because now we both live in L.A. I could just hold up my phone to Chris G's mouth. Just and hold like, up your phone indeed. and have... There is a, I will, I've, I'm not going to say where it is. I, let me say real quick. I'm not going to say where it is, but I have had Chris do an emergency pickup for me one time when we first started streaming things together. Um, Falcon heavies were coming back down again. And we saw these two Falcon cores come back down and land. And Chris says right there on the live stream, it's so Falcon cool. <laughs> but he didn't say Falcon. <laughs> And so Chris did a pickup for me in the parking lot of the restaurant where I'm like, Chris, I need you to record the word Falcon like 10 times, please. And it's I'm amazing. there at the hotel editing this pickup over something Chris said. So that it's like, on my, we're family friendly. We're like trying to do outreach for people. And there is a clip on my Twitch and on my old YouTube where it is, it is so Falcon cool. Well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> We can't. I can't just manufacture a pickup, but we are on a stream right now, and one <laughs> of the lines that I've been looking for for the new intro is you saying "good grief." Um, oh, jeez. Which is a thing you say a lot. I don't know if you knew that, but can I? Can I, I do say get, "good grief" a lot. Can I just get a, like a exasperated I "good grief"? No, gosh, no. I don't know because I feel like you need like a real "good grief." All right. Well, like members... forget an HDMI cable or don't charge a battery or something, and then call me on Discord <laughs> and be like, "Oh, I didn't bring the battery for CP11," and I'll be like, "Good grief!" And then you'll get your real "good grief." Okay. Yes, I rolled the NSF truck. Good grief. I, no, just no, kidding. Don't, I didn't. Don't do that. No, I, you would probably get more than a "good grief." for that so <laughs> yeah unplug the starlink forget a fuse don't bring a screwdriver like there are lots of ways to get me to say good grief <laughs> welp <sighs> did we do it's orange i think we did did we do it's orange I, we talked about it's orange but i don't know if we ever heard it's orange kevin kevin it's orange we there you go nice <laughs> I know, I know. He says it's orange, but in my head, he's saying it orange, just because he's so it orange. He's, he's so, so excited. Exasperated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh boy. Well, the music's playing. Have we come to the end of our marathon five-year extravaganza, which also happens to be a one million stub extravaganza, which also happens to be an NSF live on a Friday, which also happens to be. <laughs> have we come to the end of the show here? We might have. There's uh. There's also "Don't Leave Me," which is the which is me yelling oh, at the at the media me. bus at also at Artemis One <laughs> when I was the last person walking back to the bus after remote setup and the bus almost left me. The bus almost left like, you. I'm carrying like three bags and a camera and like hobbling back to the bus in the Florida heat, getting eaten by mosquitoes, and the bus starts to pull away, and I'm like there at the pad by myself with nobody else in SLS, and the bus is pulling away, and I'm just like, "Don't leave me! Which Don't leave me!" I happen to be recording a video at the time, like, "Ooh, look." I'm at remote setup, members content, BTS, and then, and Listen, then yeah. we got Don't Leave Me. <laughs> Listen to the intro when you hear, Don't Leave Me! That's Jack literally yelling at the bus as he almost gets left at the pad. <laughs> Good deal. Oh. Yo, okay. You, I mean, we it's have, 10 o'clock. We have the coolest job in the world. So it is. just thanks. Like, thank you for the support and for coming out and watching the channel and... Chris, thanks for founding the entire freaking website. And Das, thank you for every single thing you do. Doing so things. much of it, which is behind the scenes. I mean, I, I see people in comments all the time like, where's Das? Where's Das? Where's Das? And yeah. it's like, here's the thing. I love when you're on streams, Das. You too, Chris. But when Das isn't on stream, that's as, as sad as we are that we don't have Das on stream. That's a good thing. Because that means 
Stuff's getting yeah. worked on in the background. <laughs> yeah. is a, I, I want to be on more streams, y'all. Like, I really do enjoy being on streams. And it, it, it overcorrected for too long. Like, I'm out in the field doing things. We're installing things. We're doing admin things to make sure that we can keep doing what we're doing and, and all of those things. But I really do love being on streams. That's where I started. Like, how I got into this was streaming and sharing this with, sharing this with folks. So I'm going to make a concerted effort to be on more streams. I'm also going to make a concerted effort to record, like, more behind-the-scenes stuff for y'all. Um, it's always like, oh, we're so tired. We need to get this done. And we sometimes we don't record. So at Flight 3, we were really trying to record some more behind-the-scenes stuff. I even have some still in the can that y'all haven't seen yet. So uh, anyways, why are we on me full screen? We're ending the show. I think, um, <laughs> I, I think you know, it's been a, a wild ride. And we're going to have many awesome years ahead of us. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but the best part about this milestone, the five year slash one million sub milestone, is now we don't have to talk about ourselves for another who knows how many years until we hit some other <laughs> milestone. Like we we generally don't do this. Like I am not comfortable, you know, tooting my own horn. I'm not comfortable. Like I'd much rather talk about rockets. Uh, so if if this if this bored you or annoyed you or felt too self serving, um, you know what? That you don't have to see or hear it again for many years. So there you go. We got it out of the way. <laughs> check we got it out of the way check <laughs> chris chris what kind of horse is this actually i can't really tell from that i need a, a more sideway view but it, it's a lovely horse it is a lovely horse yeah. any uh any outro things to say here no just to repeat what jack was saying jack always finds the right words for what i want to say so i appreciate that because we do want more does on stream uh, people do <laughs> rightly say who oh, is does he, he's working probably a heck of a lot more than he was when he was on streams a lot and this is the hardest i've ever worked in my life yeah. like i've done all sorts of different jobs and this is but i love doing it like so we need so when we see more does on stream which everyone will be happy about it means we've sorted out some help on that side of things where we can get does on, on screen because everyone likes does on screen so that's um yeah i'm 2 2 a.m i can't talk anymore <laughs> it's, okay it's, we need to get you to sleep to, thanks to everybody for your support it does mean everything and it will keep pushing as long as you keep supporting us so that's how it'll work it's a synergy between us all the community and the team it's all very yep. much appreciated yep chris chris has said it folks that's going to be the end of our show here but as long as y'all keep showing up we're going to keep doing this um it would be really lonely if jack and me and chris and everybody was here doing streams and there was no one watching like we wouldn't keep doing that so as long as y'all keep showing up and keep supporting what we do like all of our members it's the smallest font ever now by the way um but as long as y'all keep showing up uh we're going to keep doing what we're doing we thanks for your trust and support and we thank you just clicking on the old button whenever it comes through forcing somebody else like grabbing the relative by the scruff of the neck like you've got to see this video of this launch or you know all the different things that thanksgiving or holidays or whatever where you're subjecting the rest of your family to what we do um y'all thank you so much for everything you do and being a part of the community that's the end of the show today i think we got shows coming tomorrow we're going to be talking with dr phil metzger about the destruction of the starship launch pad during flight one he actually did a scientific paper we helped with and we're going to be doing a live extra special version of nsf live Flex. tomorrow afternoon are we three o'clock there for three o'clock tomorrow right yeah I'm pretty sure that's scheduled for 3 o'clock. Adrian, just tell me that that's 3 o'clock, please. 3 Eastern, yeah. That's 3 Eastern tomorrow. Um, there are more launches coming up this weekend, too. We're going to stream those. We'll see when they're going to do Delta Four Heavy again. If they roll the booster out to the pad, we're going to stream that for you. If you want to see an engine firing at McGregor, like there was literally just an engine firing at McGregor on one of the monitors up there. Um, they were testing something on the horizontal stand. But that's going to be the end of the show here today. Let's get the horse back in the stable um, so you can get some sleep there, Chris. Jack down at Starbase as well. It's Sean. Tell Sean to wave over your head or something. Sean, wave over my head or something. <laughs> Sean's back there, too, getting into the fridge. Where did he get a cowboy hat from? I have no idea. He's from what New York. He showed up in Texas and bought a, a, a cowboy hat. Like, what more do you expect? Stop the stream. Sean in a cowboy hat is a reason to stop the stream. <laughs> Folks, that's the end of the show. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you nerds later. What, did, what was I even doing? One million subscribers.
That's you milking a space cow. What am I doing milking a space cow? This is the real reason I don't put my face cap on. <laughs> EJ wants you to be a space marine. I don't know what that what is. is. That? I, I have no idea what that is. It's amazing is what it is. Jazz hands. Jazz hands for one million. <laughs> Lies. Lies. Lies and slander. Lies and slander. We'll be hearing from my lawyer. <laughs> Look, it's got methane and oxygen. Or methane and water, actually. Reaction to horse cam. <laughs> Orbit. Are Mike still alive? I don't know. I don't know. And here we go. Nothing to do.